It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the eve of the Apple Watch. We have lots to say about that. And, and, and Apple is telling you, don't go to the stores. We'll tell you why. Georgia Dow, Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako, all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 449, recorded Tuesday, April 7th, 2015. No pinching, no grabbing. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash macbreak. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash macbreak. And by IT Pro TV. A good IT pro is always learning, and IT Pro TV is the resource to keep your IT skills and knowledge up to date. IT Pro TV offers engaging courses, now with ethical hacker training, streamed to your Roku, Chromecast, computer, or mobile device. For a free 7-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account, go to itpro.tv slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak30. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple product is worth at gazelle.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news. This is going to be a big week, but as usual, uh, when there's a big Apple thing happening, there's just kind of this, I don't know, it's like right before a, a thunderstorm, this tension in the air. Nervous energy. Nervous energy. That's Renee Ritchie from iMore.com, back from the Ool conference in, uh, where was it? It was in, I think, Killarney. It was at the U the Europe Hotel in in nice. Ireland, about three hours south of Dublin, and it was it was quite magnificent. And you were there with your partner Georgia Dow. We welcome Georgia, also from imore.com. Hi, Georgia. First time on MacBreak, but thank I know, you. I'm having I'm having a dream that I'm on MacBreak. <laughs> so thrilled to have you. That's so nice to be here. Uh, Georgia is uh, during in her day job. She is a, a, a psychotherapist, uh, but uh, she's also a jujitsu expert. Two-time Canadian champion, I just learned. That so I am. be nice, <laughs> folks. She can reach out through the chat room and kick your butt. <laughs> Pluck your heart from your rib cage in three seconds. Uh, also here, Andy Yanako. He's on the road. You guys are back, but Andy is on the road. He's at this Colorado University in Boulder, CU Boulder, where the Conference on World Affairs is going on. Hi, Andy. Hey, Leo. Sorry about the altitude problem here. <laughs> you are mile high. So uh, we, we aren't going to have video from Andy this week, uh, but we do have uh, audio, and that's that's plenty. Tell us about uh, the, the, the Council on World Affairs. What is that? Uh, it's pretty cool. They've been doing this annual conference for the past, like, six to seven decades, where they bring in about 100 people from all kinds of disciplines, like science, technology, uh politics, religion, entertainment, uh, and they have 100 panels that are open to the public, the entire Boulder community, discussing pretty much every single topic they can think of that seems relevant uh, in whatever year they're holding it. For instance, uh, I talked on two panels yesterday, uh, started the morning talking about Apple Pay and Bitcoin, and then at the end of the afternoon, I was talking about ways of that governments can weaponize the internet. Oh, wow. Uh, and, <laughs> and then there's Q&A for with everybody afterward and that, that was just like my first day uh so they've got about another seven or eight different talks over the course of this week that i'm going to be uh they're going to be doing you you did you start going there with uh, roger ebert was that how you got involved with it in the first place yeah he invited me the first year that was way back in like 1997 if you can believe it or not wow uh and 
that that's how most people come to be invited like somebody who has been there a few times suggests you know, you have to they have to kind of talk you into doing it because this is not a this is not a conference where like they 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 pay you to attend they cover your expenses uh, and it's you you you're here on your own dime and the fact that so many people come back year after year shows how uh, how how much fun it is to participate in. Roger was a 30-year participant uh, uh, by the time he invited me, and he went on for another 10 years, I think. Yeah, so neat. In fact, I wanted, to, I really want to go, especially because Henry's there, uh, and I just never, uh, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> It seems like we had this conversation a year ago. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to we'll have to arrange a good offsite like broadband source for the for the show, but <laughs> it's, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a good point. We could do that. I think Henry's uh, dorm room has excellent broadband. No, awesome. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it does if they're not all torrenting at the same time. So did you see? Now we were getting ready for the watch. Of course, Friday the the Apple event I was talking about is 12:01 uh, Pacific time. Friday the 10th, midnight Pacific time, Friday the 10th, Apple will start taking orders online for the Apple Watch. And, of course, when the stores open that day, you if I would suggest making an appointment, you'll be able to go in and get a 15-minute appointment and look at the watch. And, uh, well, incidentally, you'll be able to buy a MacBook. Will I be able to walk in and get that new uh, MacBook, Renee, you think? Is it going to be a, a challenge? Uh I don't know. Based on previous experience, some stores have them, especially the more busy ones, the flagship stores. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, though, because it's also Apple Watch try-on, and will you be fighting your way through everyone yelling, Millenet? Oh, it's going to be crazy. Try to get to it. I know. It's going to be crazy. You know who has an Apple Watch? Pharrell has an Apple Watch. Let me show you his most recent posting uh, 15 hours ago on Instagram. He's got the Mickey Mouse watch face. That ain't no fake. He was wearing it on The Voice last night, I'm, I'm told. Uh, it looks like, weirdly enough, he got the edition watch, the $10,000 watch, with the cheapest plastic band. I'm sorry, fluoroelastomer band you can get. <laughs> what was amazing to me is two, two or three weeks ago, Rolex released a $25,000 watch, and it came with a fluoroelastomer band as well. Oh. Is this the new trend? Must be the thing. Yeah. It must be the thing. Uh, so... So I guess Apple is seeding these to celebrities already. I don't know what the what the story is. Or he is. blew embargo. Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Do you think he blew embargo? No, probably no, if not. If, <laughs> if, he, if, he, if he's on like one of the most popular TV shows available the week, the, two days before the thing is getting ordered, I don't think he's breaking <laughs> any agreements that he agreed to when he was given that watch. I think they probably Call said. Call me cynical. Can you wear that on, on uh, <laughs> The Voice tonight? Tim Cook apparently yep. was uh, wearing his at the uh, NCAA uh, championship game. Uh, Tim Cook blew embargo well. You can't trust anybody anymore. A lot of people are wearing them. Apple has said we'll give you 50% off unless it's the expensive one. Then they're only going to give <laughs> – this is for Apple employees, not by yep. the way, you, not you. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to get you all excited. If you work at Apple. I was excited there for a second. <laughs> uh, George, are you going to get well, – I, well, I guess we all have to get one. I, I've been I've been waiting for this watch for four years. Oh, so I I will be there first to try to grab the watch and or like knock someone else out that's trying to get the watch before me. I am so excited. Are you gonna you'll get the sport model? I'm thinking. I am gonna get the sport model probably, and then I'm gonna rock the Milanese band with it, Ooh. so no one will know it's the sport model. You know why? Why I'm <laughs> I'm also I think getting the Milanese band only because I like the idea that it'll fit any size, right? Yeah. There, you don't have right. to punch a hole in anything or just you know or take a link out. You just wrap it to what you want. So if you want it tight one day, my wrists swell a it's lot. The, it's the elastic waistband of of watch straps, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who wears elastic waistbands here? <laughs> my so. my only worry with the Milanese was I was worried that it was going to get caught in my arm hairs. Right. Which would have been really painful, but I'm, I've heard that it does not have that happen. I'm told it does not pinch and uh, grab, yeah. Uh, I can't remember who told me. Probably Renee. Yeah, no, we tried it. Uh, both Fenerty and I tried it at the event, and neither of us could... could there, was, there were no incidents of arm hair tanglements. Okay, well, that actually is important, yeah. Apple's kind of encouraging people to go to the store, though, and try before you buy. It's, uh, they, they're treating it as a really personal dealer. item. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Andy. But I, but I wonder what their strategy really is there. If they're really trying to get this sort of feeding frenzy going for the in the weeks before, like um, 
iPhones and even the new MacBook, you can space things out. You can get people in without really trying to say, hey, look, we're going to open the, the floodgates early here, and we're going to try to encourage people to keep coming in and, and trying it. I think that they appreciate that they no one can really relate to what a smartwatch is or does. They really are going to have to have that experience before they figure out what they can do with this. I was uh, being driven back to my house uh, for about 20 minutes by a student, and we had to talk about smartwatches. And he, it was the same conversation that uh, I've been having with people for the past six to eight months where I don't wear a watch. Uh, I Someone gave me a sport watch. I wore it for about a couple of weeks, and I don't wear it anymore. Even you know, even free, you couldn't get them to wear it, and they just don't understand what a smartwatch is going to do for them. So yeah. that's there's so there there's so much that Apple is doing with the launch of this watch. They have never done with any other product before. Even all those product videos. I'm not sure if they they launched the iPhone with the exact same. Uh, amount of like pre-release. Here's a walkthrough of what you're going to expect when you see this. Uh, I mean, they this is really going to be an important point for them to make. I'm going to be angry if it's Joshua Topolsky also has an Apple Watch. I is that not that's not an Apple. Is that an? Let's zoom in on that. Do you can you center zoom enhance center <laughs> zoom enhance. Boy, that looks a little <laughs> Apple Watchy. Yeah, definitely. Look. Yeah. Yeah. He's a it was like the smaller one. <laughs> hmm. There was an interesting um, memo from Angela Ahrens that Business Insider published earlier today saying that she was trying to end the era of the massive lineups. That she thought it would be a better experience if they did more. And they've been doing this for a while, especially with the iPhones, if they did more pre-orders so that it wasn't as hectic an experience for people at the retail stores on launch day. I'm guessing. Yeah, I, think that, I think that's long overdue. Because I think that we're getting, we were getting to the point where all those lines were more, getting to be more embarrassing for Apple than a positive thing. Because now the line is all about people who are just kind of, <laughs> kind of hanging out for two days, uh, uh, causing big, big crowds that don't really enhance the the, the attractiveness of the product. Then it's certainly uh, the, in the the quotes in the memo indicate that it's more like, look. Customers are not having a good experience if they think they're going to show up on the launch day and get a product. We want to sort of walk them towards a process where they are nice and safe and snug inside their homes and they make an order and they don't show up until they know for a fact they can actually yeah. get it. And scalpers also were kind of making it a less than stellar yeah. experience. You think there'll be scalpers? And, and, and all, and all these, oh, I guess and all these, will, huh? To, to say nothing about all the people who are like saying, "My God, this is this is ridiculous." I all I all I want is a 64 gigabyte uh, phone <laughs> in my in the color that I want, and I have to keep calling every store on every Tuesday to see if they have them. And those are the sort of complaints that are going to start to fester. I just want a USB cable. What the hell is everyone doing? Yeah. Here? <laughs> will uh, will I be able to? Will you be able to mix and match any band, any watch? I think I asked you this already. Yes, yes. and you, as long as they're the same size, so forty two and with right. forty two millimeter bands with forty two millimeter case, and the thirty eight millimeter bands with thirty eight millimeter case. It remains to be seen how much stock <laughs> they'll have of additional bands at launch, but eventually they should all be available. You might want to get a couple, right? Not you at can't first. get the edition though. The edition ones are exclusive, but you can get any of the yeah, Apple yeah. Watch, any of the Apple Watch. So you'd bands. be crazy to buy a three hundred fifty dollars Apple Watch and put a seven thousand dollars band on it. <laughs> and and you also so, can't get the sports version, the silver sports version with the black band. So you have to choose between oh, white and the colored versions if you would like that. So you, oh, that's kind of a you bummer. get the black band separately though. So you have to pay fifty bucks more if you want oh, a silver watch with a black band. But so, so you could get it later. Yeah, I get it. Apple employees will get 50% off the aluminum and stainless steel models and a mere $550 off the gold version. Come on, Apple. You know that the markup's higher on the gold one. <laughs> it's higher. So you could give They've, them more. They probably don't want a lot of employees getting taken it does, all this It talk. doesn't look good. Yeah. It's embarrassing when you're when you when well, your maybe, janitor's maybe just, walking around with a ten thousand dollar watch. It doesn't it's, exactly. Maybe they're instituting a no riffraff policy on Apple Watch edition. <laughs> uh, the also iPhone might find out when I secondary market. If you start having, if they get half price editions, you might start seeing some of those show up in secondary markets. I apologize for a lot that. on eBay. A little T-Mobile <laughs> sound in there. That is not a subliminal ad for T-Mobile. It's just my phone rebooting. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Gurman. Um, says that uh, the iPad, while not offered a discount for employees, the iPhone, original iPhone, was given free to almost everybody. Mm -hmm. So the special pricing lasts for 90 days, starting on Friday. And Will you, who, anybody here going to get in line? Yeah, I'll do it for fun. Like at midnight? Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, I, I don't know if I'll get in line at midnight, but I'll go over to the stores and see what's. Oh, I'm going what to the stores. Like. Yeah. yeah. I want to pick up a MacBook, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do, I think, and uh, tell me if my strategy is mistaken, is at 12.01, I remember doing this uh, for the iPhone 6, and their servers were all screwed up, and it never did happen. But, I, but at 12.01, I will go to the Apple store on Friday morning and, uh, and order. And that way I'll get it on the 24th, right? I can do that, yep. right? Absolutely. The pre-orders become available. The joke going around now is because Star Wars is launching on iTunes on Friday the 10th. Apple has oh, to no. handle Apple Watch and Star Wars. Come on, Apple! Is that different servers or is it all the same? I mean, it's under the, like, that's iTunes. So it's all yeah. Eddie. It's all Eddie Q's job. Oh, Eddie. Eddie just showing off this time. Say, hey, I can handle that. What else do you want to do, Eddie? edition, though, so there might not be that high demand. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. We also know that you can get Apple Care for the watch. Uh, actually, Apple Care Plus for the watch. It'll be $1,000 for the edition, $79 for the watch, the regular middle one, the stainless steel, and $59 for the sport version. Why? Uh, okay, so I, I apparently don't understand what Apple Care Plus does. So you'll need to explain to me because I thought that this is a, a replacement program. So the regular, you get Apple Care. Anyone who buys an Apple Watch gets Apple Care, uh, that, which includes 90 days of phone support and a year of uh, hardware warranty. It's an extended if, warranty. Apple, the regular Apple Care. Yes. So the Apple Care Plus. Well, the uh, regular Apple Care is the regular warranty. I mean, most jurisdictions have very similar rules in effect anyway. They would have to offer at least a year of. Coverage. Wait a minute. So why should I pay for Apple Care if it's the so same? So Apple Care Plus is what you're paying for, and okay. what Apple Care Plus does is on the regular Apple Watch and on the Apple Watch Sport, it increases it to two years of both uh, phone support and. Ah. Um, Hardware uh, replacement plus sorry, hard, hardware defects, you know, typical hardware insurance plus two incidents of damage. So if you drop it or you drop it in water or anything like that, uh, there's a service fee. I don't know if they've said how much it is. It's usually seventy nine or ninety nine dollars. They'll basically just fix anything that that you accidentally break on the watch for you. The but Apple but they only do it twice in two years. Yeah, you get two incidents in those two years. Yeah. Um, the Apple Watch Edition is slightly different. It comes with the two years uh, automatically. Oh. What the Apple Care Plus does there is add a third year, and it gives you 24-7 um, <laughs> support. I don't know if a guy in a bow tie actually comes White to your gloves. house to deliver it. White glove service. Mr. Pharrell, <laughs> here's your new watch. <laughs> uh, you can be Thank sure that will happen Alfred, on the air on The Voice. Um, okay, so it sounds like at, the, at 59 for the sport, 79 for the stainless steel, that sounds like probably something you should do. I do it like Georgia can probably explain it better than me, but I do it as stress relief. I just I don't once I know I have it, I don't really worry about it anymore. Right. <laughs> well, it's one of those things you're going to be wearing it on your wrist. So there's an increased chance that you're going to knock your wrist against right. something. You're going to drop it. I, I think that I've broken more watches than I've ever even owned. It's just something that I always. What are you like, breaking other people's it. watches? I <laughs> I step on other people's watches. <laughs> I've sat on someone else's watch once. And I've knocked someone's watch off their wrist. It's a long story. So I, I should actually probably be the person that has Apple Care. Okay, so but they're I think telling that everyone that's if you're getting the watch, you should probably get Apple Care because it would be so sad that you have this new piece of technology. Yeah. And then you know, you crack the screen. Yeah. And then have to bring it in. It seems pretty reasonable. So now I've got to add it up because I'm gonna get the Milanese band and I'm gonna get the seventy nine maybe I will go get the sport instead. Um, I was going to get the stainless steel, but I mean, it depends if you want a collector. Like I have my my original iPhone, my original iPad, my original MacBook, my original. Yeah. They're all sitting behind me, and they're collector's items. So I, I will probably get a stainless steel just so that I have something, you know, Mark Newsome and Johnny Ivy to add to that shelf. <laughs> <laughs> His special shelf behind him. Um, if you have stain, okay. If you have standard Apple Care, you have to ship the watch back and your replacement will be sent. If so they are offering standard Apple Care, but you yeah. just get that for free. Yeah. Okay. So Apple Care you pay for it on a MacBook, but you don't pay for it if the naming is weird, the Apple Care Plus, I think they added the plus just because it has those two incidents right. as well, which the MacBooks don't have. Right. So it is basically the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
It's just it's confusingly labeled. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, this this is this is kind of the problem that we're going to be dealing with, like with all these like uh, uh, store orders. It's like you could you you go into Walmart, you see a case full of watches, you pick out the one you want, you walk out with it. Yeah. And when you don't have that ability to do it, now you don't know. Well, where's the one where I get this color band? Which is the one where I get this service policy? What do I get for free with it? Oh boy, we're, we're going to get so many calls from so many relatives over the next three weeks over this. Well, that's why we're spending time right now, because I'm your. <laughs> I mean, think of me as your old relative. <laughs> okay, well, now people, people have. I, I really have been getting like a lot of questions like that, and I keep telling them that don't worry about it until this fall or early next year, because I really do think that the first watch is really going to be like the very first iPad or the very first iPhone, where if this tech, this if this brand new technology, this brand new product really excites you, then you'll be very, very pleased with it. But if you're expecting this brand new phone to act as the same way with all the features of an existing phone, you might be disappointed. Though so I, I think that this is not going to be the same device that's going to be next year. And the people who wait a year, maybe they're going to get a watch that has GPS on it. Maybe they're going to get a watch with uh, with a much more mature uh, operating system and a much more mature app library on it. So given that so many people have not worn a smart smartwatch before, maybe they want to wait a year and get the more mature version of this. I, I agree with Andy. The only thing that, that mitigates it a little bit for me is that it's $350. And you, most people, at least I'm more readers now, they tell us that they buy the new iPhone and they sell it immediately when the next iPhone is announced. So their actual cost of upgrade is only a few hundred dollars each time. And that's how they manage to get the new one every year. And it's sort of like, yeah, I can wait for the one with the GPS and I can wait for the one with the video. Then the wait, wait for the one with the better, bigger screen and then wait for the one with the touch ID. But if it, Sometimes it's just fun to get new stuff, and because of the price, you can oh, yeah. get in for three fifty, and you can probably sell it next year. I think if you're sort of on the fence and you don't mind looking at it as a bit of an adventure, um, then it's a fun thing to take yeah. a look at. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I, but oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh well, I think also, you know, if you're using this for health, um, if you're using this for fitness, if you already carry around a Fitbit, this is great. It's it will be helpful to you. It's going to be something that can help monitor your heart rate. So if you're not you know, you don't have a problem with using new technology and having to go through a slight learning curve and how to use it. I think that it's going to be something fun, but also something very helpful. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I've been spending a lot of time with uh, uh, people who use Microsoft Band, which has got a really soft launch. I don't think Microsoft ever intended for it to be like a really popular consumer device with its first launch. I really think they kind of just want to to get it out there. And it has some nice things about it. It's a lot of things that are really inconvenient compared to Apple Watch and Moto 360 and all these others. But the thing that really struck me that I'm amazed I'm so stupid I didn't realize it is that I see people wearing this relatively small black rubber band on their right wrist but on their left wrist, they can still wear their grandfather's watch. And they can still wear whatever sport or fashion watch that they really, really like. So I think that just goes to show that there are so many different ways of interpreting the mandate of a wearable like watch-like device. And I'm glad we got three, di three very different approaches to it on the market. The FTA apparently is going to be a little bit more, a um, little bit less, a little bit more, <laughs> I don't know, they're not going to be as finicky. <laughs> Uh, about the uh, Apple Watch. It's going to take, according to the uh, FDA, a almost hands-off approach. Um, so uh, that's good. The um, They're going to take a very light touch towards wearable health devices going forward, not just the Apple Watch, but everything else, the, the, all those uh, health bands. Um, Bakul Patel, who's the FDA's Associate Director for uh, Digital Health, told Bloomberg Business that technology is primarily focused on motivating someone to stay healthy rather than diagnosing or treating a disease, that's good. That's stuff we don't want to regulate. We're taking a very light touch, a hands-off approach, said Patel. Um, but which makes sense. The FDA has always said, if, if you're going to get a diagnosis or a health advice from a thing, a device, then we want to make sure it's accurate. Um, you know, we don't want the Apple Watch to say, oh, you need more salt. Yeah. But, if, but it's okay for the Apple Watch to say, hey, get active. You've, you've only taken so many steps, that kind of thing. Um, so, and maybe that gives a lie to some of the, the stories in the journal and elsewhere that Apple wanted to do more health stuff. 
Although I, mean, I always want to do more. That the, the, yeah. the journal. One of the problems with the mainstream media coverage of the watch is that their their headlines are always skewed, are misaligned with their actual content. And when you look at the watch, they make a list of everything we could possibly do. What sensors exist? What could possibly go in here? And then they go through carefully and figure out what's realistic for generation one, two, three, and four. And you could spin that as Apple couldn't right. do everything. Like they couldn't make a five and a half inch iPhone in two thousand seven. Sorry. Um, they mean they, well, they got there not. in two thousand. Right. So the the watch is like that. They. There are all sorts of interesting things coming along the road, but they got into this product what they wanted to get into this product for now. Right. Mm. But to be fair, that a, a lot of us in the, who commentate on, on these things were making the same sort of complaints about uh, Android Wear watches, uh, where it's certainly not a complete product. They did what they were able to do, both with the software and the hardware. I think that part of our responsibility is to have the imagination and the experience to say, yes, I'm going to give you a practical rundown of what this can do right now, but let me tell you what I think is possible, given the hardware that I'm seeing and given the software I'm seeing and given the people that are making this who I've talked to uh, about what their future plans are. I mean, it really is important to remain an open mind. I think that anybody who slams the Apple Watch as a failure in the first few weeks, I think there are going to people. There are people who have pretty much already written that editorial about here's what it doesn't do and how. Oh my God, I I couldn't wait to get it off my wrist. It was it was a piece of junk and I returned it almost immediately. Uh, it's that's going to be one of the, some of the most least useful things written because these are people who have no imagination and no and very little ability to really uh, look at something critically. I, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I should I should walk back one step and say I'm not saying that it's not possible to write a positive review of Apple Watch but it's going to be easy to spot the ones where somebody had a picture in their mind of what their fantasy product should work like they were presented with something that did not match this expectation that they had and on that basis they were going to proclaim this one thing a failure instead of having a more balanced approach to it yeah uh <laughs> the uh um uh, uh Malay Gandhi Managing Director of Rock Health, a health-focused venture capital firm in San Francisco, is interviewed in the Bloomberg Business piece. It points out that the FDA's annual budget is a one quarter of what Apple made last quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about four and a half billion dollars. So um, the issue is partly an enforcement issue. Uh, Dr. Mama in a chat room also points out the FDA has no authority to enforce uh motivational devices so uh, yeah they're going to take a light uh touch they don't they they're not allowed to do anything about it um well good uh and you feel like uh, georgia that the the what from what you've seen and wait, we'll show a few of these videos by the way what you've seen from these videos and read that the apple watch is going to be very useful to you more more so you think than a fitbit or a nike fuel band or a jawbone up well, I think that one of the coolest things that's going to change with the Apple Watch is that, you know, I go down to a tech conference and I see everyone pulling out their phone or using Google Glass, and there's something in between yourself and the people that you're having a conversation with. What I love about the Apple Watch is that very effortlessly, without breaking a conversation, you can check if a notification is something important or not, and it keeps your eye onto a conversation. And so I think that that's a really nice thing. So hopefully we're not going to be seeing everyone pulling out their phone constantly and checking their phone instead of checking the people that they are with. The one thing that I worry about with the Apple Watch on the other side is the stress levels of people with that are constantly turning on notifications and having everything beep and buzz. I think that there's going to be a huge learning curve on how much is comfortable and how much increases your level of stress because you're going to feel constantly beholden to take a look every time you get a slight tap. Yeah. Well, I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> Although you get, I think you'll get, we'll get used to this haptic interf or taptic interface, and maybe we still, it's really nice. We'll start trusting. The, it. the but, big benefit of or the uh, Fitbit also is that this doesn't just measure steps and stairs. It also does calories burned. It does right. exercise equipment inside and outside, which I've always wanted because I use a rowing machine. Mm -hmm, it's too. got a lot of really. Yeah. Uh, like, like not next generation, but stuff that I've always wanted in the other products and just haven't had yet. Uh, and it always, it's constant heart rate uh, monitoring, right? Yeah. It's always doing and that's that. I mean, that's the stuff that's the big win for me because I had a Fitbit for a while, but I'm just not in the habit of checking my Fitbit to see where I am, you know, at the end of the day or in the course of the day. Whereas this Moto 360 watch, I'm checking the time several 
several times a day. And that's when I will see a little card just like at the very, very bottom of the time screen saying, oh, by the way, you are about 70, 70 you're only about a thousand steps short of your fitness goal. Well, that will remind me think, well, okay, maybe I will walk home instead of uh, getting a car this time. And it's that kind of, those kind of subtle yeah, little reminders, that subtle awareness that really helps you out. I, I noticed that from wearing a fuel band and a Fitbit and all that, that it does it get yeah. just... That's the cool thing. Like in the, in, the, in the screen that you're seeing right now, I love the fact in the upper left-hand corner, you can designate that corner of the screen as here is a little micro version of those three loops showing you what your activity level right. is. So it's just going to be a little, like the almost like the phases of the, of the moon, a little reminder of here's your status yeah. on how, you, how well you're doing for your fitness on the day. And that's what's really going to help people out. I'm getting a little excited. So Apple has released... So uh, for now, uh, videos, uh, I, I think you were right, Renee, that the, the, the reason they want to get people in the store is they feel there'll be a learning curve and they want people to start thinking about how to use the, use the watch so they're not just looking at it going, ha, ah. they don't want returns yeah. in the first two days. I did an article on this called uh, Stay Calm and Apple Watch On because I noticed in the demo area, a lot of people tried to use the Apple Watch like it was an iPhone. They pressed the digital crown, they went to the home screen. Yeah. They hunted around for the messages app. They went to start a new message. Uh, and when we were doing the demo, the guy just lifted it up and said, hey, Siri, send a message to Bob. And it's it's a complete, it's an inversion. It's not a pull interface. It's a push interface. And most people are going to engage through notifications, through glances in a very different way. And I think both watching these videos and being in the store and getting those demos is going to be vital. Just, just as like we had to learn, multi-touch is intuitive now. It wasn't when the iPhone first came out. That's why Apple did so many videos. Yeah. We're going to have to learn how to use this sort of push glance look-based interface. And I think they named it very specifically to sort of encourage us to, to use it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I, so that, that's exactly right. Uh, and I'm sorry I, I, if I'm if I keep mentioning the watch that I wear every day, it's only because I think it's a good frame of reference for smartwatches in general. Uh, that this is not uh, the, my main interface with this watch is really uh, voice commands because all I have to do is describe what I want to be reminded of, what I want to wa watch, what I want to get uh, get information on, and it gets that information for me. Uh, the more that you try to use it like a multi-touch screen, the more it's going to fail for you. The more disappointed you're going to be. Uh, this is the first really good walkthrough that they've given of here's what the actual experience is going to be like and that's something they, they failed to do in September they even failed to do it last month which is which I have to admit got me really concerned so it's uh, there's start we're starting to get some indication of here's what you can anticipate here's what the language of using this watch is going to be and I got to say that I do like most of what I'm seeing there are a couple of points that I, I still think I'm still a little bit confused on because I see some inconsistencies on how you surface like an action button, for instance, when you decide that here's a notification I want to do something with. It seems like sometimes you have to touch the screen to do that. Sometimes you have to swipe to do that. Uh, so I'm sure that's going to be more clear when I have an actual watch on my wrist. Uh, but it really seems like they have to teach a new language here. And it's not wrong for them to have to develop a new language. It's okay if you have to learn how to use something. These videos are actually uh, a great idea. They're, they're going to do more. They only have four, but you can see there's ghostly impressions of seven more that they want to do. Yeah. yeah. So the the first one is just kind of a generic introduction. And then they're going through features one by one. There'll be messages, watch faces, how to use the digital touch. They've got coming soon phone calls, Siri, Maps, Music, Apple Pay, Activity and Workout. I was hoping they would release one of these a day starting last week, but they, they seem stuck at four. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm sure they're going to be getting these out, I hope, before April 10th, because I think it would behoove, well, actually, well, I guess they only really have to get them out before April 24th, don't they? When you when you see someone just raise the the watch up and say, hi, hello, yeah, okay, I'll be back in a few minutes, and then hang up the phone and just go wow. right back to talking to you. It's a pretty it's a pretty awesome experience. Wow, I can't It really wait. is Dick Tracy. Mm. Have you watched somebody really <laughs> use this move other than the demo room? I may have. Oh, uh, I may have been incredibly. I may have been incredibly impressed and, and written thinly veiled articles about ah, what I imagine such interactions would be yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. So we could just say that has the ring of truth. Um, I'm thinking maybe the reason they gave one to Topolsky. He does. Uh, doesn't he do gadgets and Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show? Yeah. He also does all the Bloomberg yeah. coverage, and Bloomberg is a major pub. True. But I wouldn't be surprised. I think they want to get it on TV. I don't think they care about <laughs> Bloomberg as much. Does somebody at iMore have one? Uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah. Does somebody at, uh, I wonder if it, uh, <laughs> there's no Macworld anymore. Uh, <laughs> where else? Yeah, there's, there's, there's Macworld offices. There's offices. There's a website. Um, I thought this uh, digital touch was interesting. This is this is kind of one of the more trivial uses of it. But in fact, you've even written about this, Renee, how it might have some potential of more 
value. Um, they also uh, they they alternate between male and female uh, uh, narrators and wrists. Yep. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, set up. To choose a friend. Here she is. Turn to set up uh, your favorites menu, right? And it looks like you can get quite a few in there. Three, six, nine, twelve. I don't have that this many is, friends. This is so interesting to me because there's two buttons on the phone, and a lot of people have brought this up. You have the digital crown, and then you have the other button. Yeah, that's like twice as many as an that. iPhone. Well, you know, so the iPhone has the home button and the sleep button, so it's analogous. Oh, okay. And right. I, I, I don't know if it'll ship this way, but you can technically right now press those two buttons to take a screenshot. So it's very similar oh, interesting. Uh, to an iPhone. But they've assigned one click of that button to bring you to friends, which means that they're really emphasizing communications. Because that's if you're doing anything stressful, that's the easiest action to perform. Some people really want it to do like a lapse for jogging because they feel like when they're jogging, they need something really easy to do. Other people want just one click. Right now, <laughs> it's two clicks for Apple Pay. Uh, if you hold, if you do uh, three, like if you if you hold it down, you get the shutdown. If you press it again, you get the force quit. There's a whole bunch of stuff layered in there, but the primary ones are. It's, it's a really interesting choice Apple's made on what. Well, again, you hold down the digital crown, you get Siri. You press it twice, you you flip between the clock face and the most recently used app. You do it three times, you get accessibility. Oh, yeah, so assigning yeah, yeah. each one of those. <laughs> And no one's going to use it, all of yeah. them. Like you is have that, all is that changeable, on. or are you stuck with those actions? Not so far, but right now they're very similar to what happens with the out with the with the iPhone. You get the right. single click of the home button, the double click, the triple click. No one uses them all all the time. So the the, the more obscure ones are just from more rarely used actions, and that's fine because you can stage interface that way. It makes it very easy for. Because the people who want it more will go further to get it. Right. Uh, but it, it is interesting how much stuff they did bring over and what priority they assigned to all those on the watch. Yeah, that that was just that was just my concern. I, as I was watching these videos, because again, I was not I was not the watch event last month, so I have not had experience with a live fire uh, version of this. Thing. I've, I've worn I've I've had experience with the hardware, but not the actual software that was shown uh, last month. And uh, they were showing things like uh, when you the the screen by def the, the the screen is uh, is sort of leveraged towards just showing you a piece of information without you having to do anything to get that information and if you want to action on that interfa on that information you have to do something to surface some sort of a button that lets you interact uh, and there's sometimes when they're trying to say well now if you just simply hold and press on that screen that's when you get the reply button uh, coming up and there were other parts of this video where it seemed to say and to do this you simply swipe up where you scroll down to see options on what you can do with it this. Um, that might, I don't know whether that's a clumsiness of my thinking, a clumsiness in the video, or uh, maybe a bit of friction inside the interface itself. Having two um, buttons, I think, does kind of bring that up for me anyway. And I, uh, yeah, you're right, Andy, I have an open mind. It just, it, it, it just, it just bothers me that it, I think it's a brilliant idea to have here is one big button that does nothing but bring up people. Right. That's brilliant. And, and that's have, the case. I, I just, even long pressing or force pressing. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, having here's front and center. Here's one of the biggest buttons. Yeah. You're, you don't even have, you can just simply not even not even divert your attention away from what you were looking at. You can just simply tap a button right. that you can feel, and you see that that's that's a very very elegant and interesting way of uh, of communicating what this watch is supposed to do. It's supposed to help you connect to people. It's when you start thinking, well, oh wait, is this one of those things where I have to hold and press this, or is this one of the things where I have to click this several times to make this work? Uh, so uh, for, for the most part. Uh, I, I've watched this, these videos a few times now, and I was very pleased with what I saw. There are a couple of rough edges that, or rather, I'm sorry, let's be more accurate and say there are some things I still don't understand that seem a little bit confusing to me. Mm. But there again, is a learning a curve, video. though. There's, there's absolutely a yeah. learning curve. I don't exactly. know if you guys remember the iPad. Like the the button would be the uh, mute button, or sorry, it was orientation lock, oh, yeah, and then it was mute button, it. and then yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, no, no plan survives uh, contact with right. a million or two million or five million active well, users, and that's part of the interesting thing of this is maybe they will let you reassign that later. They'll say, you know, there's five functions on this. Do you want one click to be friends? Do you want one click to be Apple Pay? Do you want one click to be uh, timekeeping? I mean, it, it, there, there's a lot of room for them to maneuver with this after they see how people react yeah, that's, to it. That, that's definitely true. And there, and there are a couple of different aspects to this. Um, it's true that you could reassign that that slidey button on the side of the iPad, but it's not as though if you shift, if you move it up, then it's silent. But if you move it up and then press it in, now you've exact access Siri. If you move it up and then sort of hold it as you push it in, and that's the sort of complexity that I'm that I'm talking about. But it's possible that this is all just you know talking. This is all just worrying about nothing because some of my favorite interface things are you have a button that just simply does one thing, like the like the home button on the iPad or and on the iPhone. You 
associate it with that you touch this and you will instantly be teleported wherever you are back to a familiar grid of your application icons. It's a very reassuring thing to have. Now, maybe after the first month, you figure out that, oh, wait a minute, if I actually double tap on this, that will actually get me to a carousel of all my running apps. And so once you discover that, that's great and it's a great shortcut, but if you never discover, if you never discover that, then it doesn't really interfere with how that button immediately works. So it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting learning process. Yeah, I think that it's going to take that usual two-week learning curve of how do you use this, and you're going to feel that regular discomfort of it not wanting to do exactly what you want it to do like at the moment. I think that you know, depending on what screen you're on, different buttons are going to do different things. I think that's going to be very confusing for people um, because they're used to always having like a center home button. We're going to expect that this is going to work like an iPhone, mm. and it isn't. It, it just can't. It's just too small of real estate in order to interact with the same way. So there'll definitely be people calling probably most of us up of how to use this. Why is this not working the way that we hope it would? Yeah. Let's take a I break. I want to take a little break. We can come back. If you have more watch thoughts, uh, we'll certainly do more uh, watch, although this concludes the primary portion of the watch segment. <laughs> There's lots of other things to talk about, including I've got the new MacBook Pro, the 13-inch with the uh, Force, what's it called? Force track, Touch Track? Force, Force touch. touch. Force Touch Trackpad. And uh, I can give you some uh, thoughts on that. Um, Georgia Dow's here. It's great to have you, Georgia, from imore.com, her first time on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you just, I wish you didn't work on Tuesdays. That's all I can say. <laughs> just quit your job. Right. Be here every Tuesday. <laughs> uh, she, uh, uh, she writes it, uh, what do you, what's your beat at iMore? Um, I used to do a lot of the reviews, so I used to do all the cases. We used to do, we do a lot of videos there, and um, then I do some special pieces on different ways of psychology and the way that we use our yeah. technology. Yeah. I know you gave a, a, speech, a talk at, uh, at Ull about that. Yes, yeah. I did one on is innovation. On, is that online anywhere? I believe that it is. I think that it's already up. Um, so that was on motivation. Why do we get stuck? How can we get past it? And uh, we also then had an I More room where we each, uh, Serenity, Renee, and I each gave a certain talk and dealing with the different things that might be stopping us from being more motivated. ULL.ie if you want to see more about the uh, 2015 old conference. And I presume at some point, if they haven't already, they'll have your video up. I want to watch that. And she I is, not, not to toot her own horn too much, but she's uh, keynoting the NS North conference, I think, Saturday. Is it Saturday, Georgia? I'm, I'm leaving on Friday? Friday. I'm actually keynoting on Friday. The problem is that's April 10th. So I'm going to be driving <laughs> instead of making my appointment. What? I know. To Bad try on scheduling. My watch. Oh. Right. Oh. I know. So it's going to be a little bit of a hardship while I'm driving down and everyone's going to be talking about yeah. their experiences with trying yeah. on the watch. Seems like you guys have some fun up there at iMore. That's like a, that's like a little geek, geek heaven, a little bit of geek heaven. We, we have the Montreal. most fun. At, I, like, I don't know every other site, but we have a blast. Seems like We it. do all kinds of craziness. We're jumping yeah. on beds. Yeah. Squirting each other with water guns. Renee cut me during our ice bucket challenge. I was bleeding <laughs> during. The, the ice just, cut you. I just sent it in your direction. <laughs> you the threw ice an ice bucket at Georgia? It. No. So what happened was it was the ice bucket challenge, and it took Georgia <laughs> so long to get ready that the ice fused into larger pieces oh, of ice. Oh, ow. And we didn't notice that until Oh, it's her fault for taking so long to get ready. Is that what you're it's, saying? It knows everybody's fault. All right, all right. Nobody walks away clean. Anyway, I thank you, Georgia. I know your th your throat is killing you from talking that old, but yeah. uh, thank you for being here. Renee Ritchie from imora.com also. Great place to go, uh, as always. But he also does uh, the Debug podcast there. I know Georgia's on some of the podcasts, right? Yeah, she does Vector with us. Vector. Uh, you can find that at imore.com. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. He's in Colorado today for the uh, yep. Council on World Affairs, but we've got him via still picture. <laughs> Just Actually, like, it, we're, I'm going to pretend like I'm, uh, it's like 1978 and I'm giving like a, a live from a conference in Moscow. <laughs> I love it. Test He's, negotiations closed today, Leo, <laughs> as Brezhnev insisted a hardline stance on NATO communities. On the line with us now via satellite phone from Moskva. Our show today brought to you by lynda.com. Here is a great way to learn. I think we I think human beings are learning machines. It, it, we're happiest when we're learning something new. When we're solving problems, I think we're all just kind of curious. If you want to make things happen, I want you to maybe take better photos, build a better website. Matt, haven't you always wanted to master Photoshop or Lightroom? Maybe that's just me. 
sharpen your negotiation skills, build a better resume. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious minds. If you, uh, Because you're Mac folks, we figure you'll be interested in the, uh, and, I've, and I've been doing this one, the Swift Essential Training. They also have Objective-C Essential Training for the old school coders. They also have an amazing course called uh, Building a Note-Taking App. This is kind of cool for iOS 8, so you actually start from beginning to end to build an app for an iPhone. Within hours, you'll have created that working app and kind of painlessly learned the basics of developing for iOS. There's even a course, uh, and I, this would be a great one for uh, high schoolers, programming for non-programmers, and they do it with iOS 8 as well. L-Y-N-D-A, lynda.com. With your membership, you get access to every course taught by the best, the top experts in the field. They're passionate about their subject matter, and they're passionate about communicating to you and Linda does such a great job of producing these that you re they're really great they chop them up into small chunks so you can learn at your own pace you can browse and search the course transcript so you can find exactly what you want and follow along I know a lot of you uh, like to read along it's great you can also take notes there and, and refer to them later you can even watch these on the go download them and put them on your Android or iOS device create playlists customize your learning path share them with friends I it's so cool that what we've done is we've arranged a 10-day kind of run-of-the-place trial offer for free. So so go to L-Y-N-D-A, lynda.com slash MacBreak, and you've got 10 days, and you've got access to all of the 3,000 courses. Pick a couple, watch a little bit here, a little bit there. Get a sense of what they can offer. I think you will love them. And if nothing else, go watch Burt Monroy. He's just the greatest, even if you don't have no interest in Photoshop. L-Y-N-D-8, Ben Long's got a great photo course. Lisa and I are watching that one. It's kind of the kind of basics of composition and stuff. L-Y-N-D-A.com slash Mac break. From a beginner to expert, there's something for everybody at lynda.com. We thank them so much for their support of uh, Mac break weekly. Georgia Dow, Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako. We're talking Apple. We have been talking the Apple Watch, of course. Wired Magazine has an article, The Secret History of the Apple Watch, David Pierce, writing about this. And uh, now, you've been following this all very closely. By the way, nice job in production, uh, Wired. They're doing something really beautiful here. Um, this is like reading a great magazine article, a New Yorker article with beautiful illustrations. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of this? Any, any revelations here? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, the, the, most of it seemed to be the same stuff that I got talking to people who were designing two different kinds of Android Wear watches. And it's very familiar to stuff I was talking about to people who uh, were, were not involved directly in, in the development of the Pebble, but had spent like a lot of time with those people. It's, it, does, it seems like they're reiterating a lot of things that seem to be intrinsic and obvious to the design of a smartwatch. Uh, not, a, not a whole lot of surprises. The, the, the one kind of interesting thing to take away is that they did make the point that this person was a considered a, was somewhat a controversial hire. Uh, Gruber called a, a, some a Lynch a bozo, a bad he hire. The, yeah. He was the Flash guy. Well, he was the guy yeah, at Adobe who said the iPhone should really support Flash. So that's part of the problem, right? Well, but I mean, it's like I don't know. It's it's it, it ignored it ignored the idea that there were some good arguments that he was making, and also saying, "Oh my God, what 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 use could this person be because he had an opinion that was not shared by me, right. being the commentator?" <laughs> right. Uh, interesting. One of the interesting things to me is that they uh, Apple, uh, and we all know this. Apple tests a lot. There was this old saying that you do like you know 100 prototypes, 10. Sorry, 100 ideas, 10 prototypes, one final version. And one of the prototypes they mentioned was using a timeline-based interface, which sounds very similar to what Pebble is shipping as their next-generation interface. But Apple decided against that because even though it would be past, present, and future, it didn't do enough in their minds, at least, to prioritize the importance of that information. It was just chronological, and they wanted to have uh, multiple uh, dimensions of importance surfaced on the Apple Watch. So things like... A, just a little bit about how the project started, um, how how the development went on it, uh, I thought were really interesting. Yeah. I kind of wish that it, it had gone deeper into some of the stuff. Um, and some of it was hard to tell what was David and what was Apple. Um, you know, just because what was ascribed to Apple uh, is ascribed to Apple and what the journalists kind of 
takes away from that, I think are, are, are very different things. And I, I like, I like, I'm a history buff. I like knowing all this, yeah. this kind of stuff. So all yeah. these details the better for me. By the way, I have to give you credit because I stuck with uh, Becoming Steve Jobs and you're right. This is a, actually a really good book. And I can see why the yeah. uh, Jobs fans like it because it's a much more full, f fully formed picture of, of Steve. Yeah, not the, whitewashed. But it's not, yeah, not, it, well, it isn't whitewashed. And, and now in hindsight, the Isaacson looks a little bit more, whitewashed i mean it really is the full picture of steve jobs uh and i i feel i'm not finished still not finished only in chapter seven but i feel like i'm learning i, I feel like i'm getting to know steve in a, in a, in a much better way it's really it well made done. me it made me reread creative creative sorry creativity incorporated right afterwards because they kept referencing i'm it dying so to read this this is of course the uh, president of pixar yeah. and uh, in the book they really give they say you know steve would take credit for toy story it ain't it ain't that. It's the president of Pixar, which whose name escapes me. Ed Catmull. That's right, Ed Catmull, and of course uh, John Lasseter, who were the real geniuses there. Catmull's written a book that I can't wait to read called Creative What's Incorporated, Creativity Incorporated, and apparently it is going to be my next book because uh, Schlender uh, and uh, Ted Selle say um, that it's, it's the book on how to manage creatives. Yeah, well, not just that. Like, you had to manage down all the talent in Pixar. And a lot of Hollywood individuals, they just leave after a project. They make a project, they leave. They they kept this group together. Also, they knew how to manage up to George Lucas and, and uh, Steve Jobs, which is not an easy task. Not easy, yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that they did, we learned from the book, is just keep their physical distance. Catmull said, we're going to be as... Pixar's going to be as far away <laughs> from next, which Steve had to run, as possible. Uh, and Steve didn't really care to get in traffic, so it was really pretty easy to do. There uh, was a brilliant story from James Thompson who does the PCALC app and drag things at the old conference. And he shared a little bit that he, he was the original <laughs> engineer on the dock and he was working out of Apple's Irish office. And he would he went to Apple one day uh, to, you know, to, for one of the meetings. And Steve Jobs was alone with the human interface guy. And he said, you know, how's the dock going? And the human interface guy said, oh, it's great. James is in town from Ireland now. And Steve just turned out, turned left, went to Bertrand Serlay's office and he said, Am I to believe that the per that the person working on the dock is living in effing Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> and he told him to fix it immediately. So they went to James and said, you've got to move to Cupertino. And James said, no. no. So he said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell Steve that you've moved to Cupertino. <laughs> He'll never ask and, again. And then you're yeah. never going to be in the same room alone yeah. with him again. Yeah. Yeah. How can you write good software in Ireland? That's Steve. You know, what I get from this book is that he said things like that and then five minutes later completely forgot that he'd ever said it and would even even be embarrassed to admit it. Yeah. Yeah. He was fiery. Tim Cook is, is more, yeah. more uh, one, yeah. one, analytical. Yeah. One, of the, one, of the most in, one of the most interesting sort of through lines of the book for me was the number of times where he has he felt he felt the need to apologize for past behavior. Sometimes yeah. even like even like three minutes after he did something he, he regretted. Schlender says, and I think this is accurate, he's basically like a spoiled kid who has tam temper tantrums and then regrets it <laughs> and wants it his way and no other way. Uh, acknowledges Not unusual at that level. No. Um, and I think we all have to acknowledge that it was those, in many cases, character flaws that made Steve Jobs a genius that gave, it, gave us, you know, the iPad, the iPhone, the iPod, the iMac. I can't imagine someone writing a book about this, like about me, like this. I would, I, I like, uh, well, would it had find to be after his story. death, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I have enough embarrassing anecdotes. I know. I want to see it in print. <laughs> My Renee, God, I'm that... taking notes now. Renee. <laughs> George I'm is going to write that now. book. Don't even worry. <laughs> <laughs> but for God Steve, you can YouTube see, kids. you know, uh, an only child. Yeah. You know, he mentioned spoiled beyond belief. His parents thought he, he was like God's gift, and they right. treated him that way. And 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 he ended up believing it. And it worked for him. It well, it did because uh, he didn't let other people get in the way. And I think one of the greatest uh, quotes from Stephen, it came from the Isaacson book, was he said, you got to realize, you, you know, everybody kind of accepts everything and assume that the people who designed every, everything around you were smarter than you. He said, you got to understand they're dumber than you and you can fix anything. You're, you know, you're, <laughs> you don't, you're not stuck with anything that you've been given. Uh, so make it better. And I think that's not such a bad thing. Hey, speaking of that, I thought I'd show you the, uh, this is the Galaxy S6 Edge, which uh, I just got uh, today. So, uh, but he, let me show you the fingerprint reader. Because <laughs> first of all, it, it, there's, it, it works just like, it works just like the one on the, uh, on the iPhone and the iPad. It's, Sorry, am it's, I to believe that their previous fingerprint technology has been changed for something that now works like 
Yeah, because I have. That's actually a good idea. I have the old one uh, on the Note 4, which you had to swipe, just like most fingerprint readers until Apple came along. Now it's Apple style. And if you want to add a fingerprint, uh, it's very Apple style. I showed this before the show, but let me let me show you again. I'll go to the lock screen and security, and I'll add a fingerprint. So uh, it says, place your fingertip on the home key to verify your identity. So I'm going to unlock it now. Whoops. I'm going to unlock it now, and I'm going to add a new fingerprint. Let's add this one. Doesn't this look a little familiar? Watch this. Oh, and as I continue yeah. to place my fingertip on the home key, it builds up a fingerprint bit by bit. It's black, not red, Leo. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, it also asks you, just as Apple does, to, okay, now stop. Uh, we're going to try it from a different angle. It's very similar. Uh, and it, I have to say, it seems to be uh, very similar in its actions. It seems to be in instantaneous. Uh, it's a great way to unlock the phone. I don't have to swipe it anymore. It's much more reliable than I hope previous everybody Samsung has these apps. eventually. Uh, this is so great, yeah, and I especially mean, I, with I, tap I, to I never, pay. I, I'm, I'm not one to, to really care about one phone ripping off another phone. I, every, I, I use usually maybe like one new phone every five weeks with all the reviews I do. Yeah. And every single time it's like, gee, I wish that my Android phone had this feature from the iPhone or yeah. I'm testing out the iPhone 6. Oh, gee, I really wish the, I, I really miss this feature from Android. I mean, I've, when I was using the iPhone 6, it's like, geez, if, if Android had a phone that looked and worked exactly like this, I would definitely be buying one exactly like that. And so anything that makes a better choice for consumers, that's not just a, if they understand, the, I guess if they understand the reasons why Apple or Samsung or Motorola made this choice and implement them in their own way, then it's just nothing but upside for consumers. This is the edge. So this is uh, it's certainly unique. I don't think it adds any functionality, but anybody looking at it will go. That's cool. Exactly. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. It, yeah, the, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand why, why I don't understand why people are complaining about that. If you if you were to look at any product, Apple Motor, again any any product, and you have to justify every single detail as something that adds function, you're not right. going to get there. It's okay for people to buy this simply because my God, it's a really cool wraparound screen. It like I like it, and it gives me pleasure. Especially and that's you why do a lot of sliding, it. so it feels very kind of yeah, nice when you're yeah, sliding. Yeah, and, and, Particularly on Android, where they really do, at a much more intense level, the idea of swiping in from right. one side of the screen actually actions something. Right. Uh, Apple hasn't. Apple developers haven't really picked up on that the way that Android developers have. Yeah, I, I think it's. I mean, just I've only had it for a few, and I decided to buy the Edge because, and then I felt bad because I read all the reviews and said I'll save a hundred bucks. It doesn't do anything. But I just, I think it's pretty. And uh, yeah, it is. It's a little. But, people were saying it's very iPhoney, and it, from certain angles. Certainly, if you look at it from this angle, that could be the bottom of an iPhone 6. But but no one's going to mistake this for an iPhone. Uh, Except for yeah. Samsung's rep, according to Engadget. I don't know if you saw that in the Engadget yeah. review. The Samsung rep picked it up for a few minutes and didn't realize it was an <laughs> iPhone. It's an iPhone. I, I could tell the difference. I've Having used and own, uh, owning both. The Edge at least looks... I like the Edge better. And it's the same reason I like the Galaxy Notes better is that it, it feels more like Samsung being Samsung to me. And I, I find that way more interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's it's Well, I mean, when you compare it to the Note with the plastic... You know, back and and all of that. It's it's really quite elegant. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm I, uh, it's, I'm ex I'm excited about trying it out. I'll have a review for it on Friday on uh, before you buy. But um, so far, uh, hey, the fingerprint reader works. And as long as we're talking other new things, I, uh, here's the new MacBook Pro 13 inch with the uh, uh, the Force Touch trackpad. That's really the only thing that's different from existing macbook pros i mean I and guess broadwell yeah broadwell process new pro, new chipset faster ssds they say mm -hmm. uh it does feel snappy i got the i7 i, I don't know why I, need, I get all the memory in a big drive i just thought i'm gonna max it out but if you're gonna roll roll deeply oh i after having talked to andy you tried these out at the apple store i did a little experiment yeah. uh i turned it off or, and and i and i had everybody in the studio click the trackpad and verify for themselves that it doesn't move. I mean, it's a, it's just a solid. It's like the 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 wrist rest is just solid. And then yeah. I turn I've, it on, I've, and you start clicking, and for you will swear, your mind will swear. No, yeah, yeah. there's a, it's moving. There's a click. Like physics is you a know, lie. I, I, I'm only. 
I, I'm only less excited about Force Touch as I am about the Apple Watch in terms of what this says about future Apple products. Because once they start putting, once they start really expressing the rules for here's what this does with an interface, and once they start putting into it into things like the iPad and the iPhone, they don't even have to do something space age like having a having a virtual keyboard where you can feel the keys underneath your fingers. If they just simply give me the ability to rest my finger on a user interface element and get information about it and basically how I interact with it physically changes what it does for me. My goodness, that's a, that's a totally unimaginable way of interacting with a computer, and it just gets me so excited about what could be done with this and yeah. how Apple could put how could intelligently put it into something. This is a classic Apple, though, where there's nothing new here. We've had haptic feedback for years. In fact, every time I use it, I was very it's like, oh, that's a gimmick. But they just made it better and work, and it's, it's now a very it's different like, technology that Apple's using. Is it? This is and, not traditional haptics. Yeah, so uh, right. that, I, I forget. I keep forgetting your name, but it's based on a twenty-year-old paper on something called sandpaper. Uh, and some people try to do it with Sonic. Some people do it with horizontal forces. But the one I believe Apple is using, uh, they figured out that your your fingers really can't tell the difference between horizontal and vertical forces. So they can hit things together horizontally, and you'll perceive them to be a, a vertical push or press, or or because they, they can do all sorts of things, dimples. All all sorts of simulations of of uh, vertical, I forget what they call them, but but vertical effects. And it took a long time. And uh, I think I mentioned this before, Brett Victor, who worked on it for a while at Apple, was tweeting during the event that he can't believe Apple got it to market so quickly. And this is the first generation. They basically made multi-touch three-dimensional. And it's going to be super exciting because it's on the watch. They managed to get it on the, on the Mac uh, within six months of showing it off on the watch. It's rumored to be in the next iPhone, perhaps the iPad Pro as well. It's, it's going to add a, literally another dimension to all the, the interfaces we've been using. This is, uh, it's Margaret Diane Resvan. She was at uh, the MIT Media Arts and Sciences program, uh, co-authored with, I, I presume this is Marvin Minsky, uh, came out in 1995. So it's computational haptics, the sandpaper system for synthesizing texture for a force feedback display. Oh, I see. Her name is Margaret Diane Resvan Minsky. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Margaret Minsky, and he's got Nick Negroponte's uh, signature. It's certified by <laughs> uh, Nick Negroponte. All right, that's her last name. I get it. Okay. I, it it's was, like we used to see multi-touch demos at MIT that looked like Minority Report, then eventually we got the iPhone. And these yeah. technologies take a while to... Well, to and, and by the way, let me show you one interesting thing here. I'll quit out of that. Uh, uh, so I've turned on tap click. Maybe I shouldn't with taptics or haptics because that may be a, a little bit uh, confusing. So I can just tap it. I can click something. If I press it a little harder, it it's the click. If I press it really hard, it does a preview, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. I don't know if I am convinced of that. I mean, it's easy enough to press the space bar, which is the way I'm used to doing a preview. Uh, and the space bar it's is a like, toggle, which is nice. Yeah, but it's, it's like what I was saying before. It's the sort of thing where if you don't know it exists, it doesn't complicate this for you at all. But once you find out that it exists, right. if it's a natural gesture, then it becomes second nature. It's really going to be just a question of can Apple implement this so successfully and evangelize it to developers so well that it will be just as natural as tapping the space bar or just as natural as holding down the shift key while you're, uh, while you're clicking on something. Right. I feel like this is not quite fully hooked but maybe that's just me um, it's, it's not it's 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 well implemented it's, it's just not as broad as it needs to be to be revolutionary but i'm i'm really excited about what could be done with this so right. i'm very excited yeah yeah i mean it, clearly and uh, obviously it's not new it was this uh ms minsky created the uh, concept 20 years ago and we've seen haptics often since then but this is the first time i've used it where it, it has a clear value and it is kind of magic that there's a it feels like it's moving. There's a physical yeah. click on something that is absolutely static. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. Yeah, I I think I might turn off the deep click because I don't. It doesn't. I accidentally do it. I'm not really sure when it's going to happen. It's maybe I just haven't gotten used to how hard yeah. you have to press and all that. But and it's new, Leo. I mean, like it, this is the, again the first iteration of this technology. And I, I don't know if you've tried iMovie yet, but there was an editor talking about it. And iMovie it'll give you a little bit of force feedback when you get to the end of a clip to tell oh. you that it's it's 
there's a drag coefficient now at the end of it. And the editor who was talking about it said, I didn't even know about it. I just suddenly moved. My finger told me it was at the end, and I, and I realized it was at the end before I realized why I realized oh. it. <laughs> okay. That's, so that's, yeah, maybe it's going to be in applications that will be the most useful. You yeah. know, I've only used it in Finder so far. Okay. Um, After a while, hopefully it'll just become intuitive. Right. Well, it isn't because we're not used to this idea of pushing exactly. a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's like a little weird. She uh, only had a BlackBerry, tour, a BlackBerry Storm. Leo. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. That was a physical click. Yeah. The second one was piezoelectric, which was a little bit different, but it still wasn't the same That's as terrible, this. Terrible, terrible. Um, so there you go. A couple of new products uh, in the uh, in this brick house uh, today. And so far, I love the, uh, the, the MacBook Pro. I mean, it's, it's not, it's fast. The screen is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's not a higher res screen yeah. than before, is it? No, I have last no. year's model and I missed that trackpad. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. It's it's still the Mac to, to me. It's still the MacBook Pro with the word Pro in quotation marks because it's a it's an excellent mid range computer, right. but it's really not a top of the line anything. Semi Pro. As as concerned. It's a semi Pro. It's yeah. It's 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 like you know how like when you go into the BMW showroom and you go into the luxury edge edge of the showroom and they've got like the one that's not really as good as the rest just to get you to spend the extra ten thousand dollars on the really good ones. That's what the MacBook Pro is for me. I don't know the, if the I Diet Coke of Pro. The Diet Coke. Yes, exactly. It's uh... Syracuse a toaster oven argument. <laughs> I like it because I I don't you know I, right I normally use a fifteen inch here. Um, and I just like the portability of a 13. This is not going to end up being the studio computer. I think I'll just I'll take this for my travels. This will be my this will be my photography computer. Hence the the picture. So you'll have the yeah. MacBook for ultralight. You'll have this one in between. You'll have the, <laughs> the MacBook Pro and then the iMac and then the you're going to have that entire diagram Apple put up on their display. Leo. I'm actually not <laughs> buying the MacBook because uh, I I decided instead to buy this. I decided that MacBook wasn't going to be fast enough for what I want to do, but Lisa's buying it, so I get to try yeah. hers. What, what color is she going to buy it in? I'm trying to convince her to buy gold. She won't. Yeah, it's the acceptable gold is so color. Pretty. <sighs> I hear that, Lisa. I, I gotta tell you. Gold. <laughs> gold is pretty. Are you going to get it's gold? A very, it's it's a very subtle gold. It's well, that's the thing. Gold. I think she's thinking it's but, like gold, gold. Yeah, it's it's more it's more like if you go into the art museum and you see a relic from a thousand years ago ago, it's not designed. It was it was just a choice of metal as opposed to hey everybody look at this gold thing that I own. As a as I, as I said with the with the very first uh, gold iPhone, it's more like uh, Catherine Hepburn gold as opposed to Kim <laughs> Kardashian gold. Right. I think she's yeah. thinking it's Kardashian. We compared right. it. So if you have a gold iPhone gold. around there, we're talking about it's you, Lisa. It's it's just enough gold so that people everyone knows that you have the new MacBook. She, she, it's, it's the same gold it's, as the phone. It's the gold, you have the gold phone, right? Yeah. No, you don't have the gold phone. Uh, no, I do. It's just the gold. No, phone. I'm talking to Lisa. She's, I'm sorry, okay. Renee. <laughs> no, no, I see that you can have it. You have it, uh, Renee. I don't like gold. She says she's getting the gunmetal gray. Oh, that's also very cool. Because she's because she's kind of likes shooting. That's things. cool too. Yeah. That's yeah, very I, I, got, I, I, I did want to say something though about the about the new MacBook. I have I've uh, I only really get my heart my most deepest opinions and understandings about something by trying things out and sometimes failing miserably. This week I decided, you know what, I don't want to be bothered by TSA. I don't want to be bothered with a 13-inch notebook. I can Whatever I've got to do this week, I can do it with my full-sized iPad and my iPad mini, and that's all I'm going to take with me. Uh, and of course, we, it, with so many things today particularly would have been a lot easier if I just had the ability to run Mac OS or if I had uh, the, that sort of uh, resource available to me. And so it really did, uh, not that I was ever skeptical about the 12 inch MacBook, but if I had had a 12 inch MacBook in my library, there's no question that I would have thought, well, maybe I should just leave a MacBook at home. Yeah. A 13 inch, even if a 13 inch Air might have made that decision for me. Oh, no, I don't really want to be bothered by that, but that would have been an iPad sized Mac seems to be something that would get me very interested in spending $1,300 of my money to have my fourth working Mac in the office. Yeah. Well, actually, you maybe want to wait for the new 8K iMac. <laughs> this is not true, is it? So this, 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 this is why be. I don't like modern media. I have a big problem with mainstream media right now. So this, uh, on LG's website, it said that Apple had announced an 8K um, iMac, and a bunch of websites wrote a story saying uh, LG leaks an 8K iMac. Right. LG did not say Apple is making one. LG said Apple had announced one. Apple has not announced an 8K iMac. So the headline should be LG erroneously reports that Apple has announced an 8K iMac. That's it. 
There is no other story here. The 5K already pushes existing hardware to its limits. Yeah, and yeah. There's no connection. Apple had to make their own timing controller to get to 5K. Uh, the next generation Skylake processors, which aren't out yet, are required to drive 5K. LG's existing panels are nowhere small enough for an iMac at 8K. It is it is so wrong, but it also shows what is like just n not good reporting. Yeah. Um, and any yeah. story well, it, it, that, of Apple has legs. Well, oh yeah, of course. Everybody knows whether you know. And I, I me being a suspicious type. Figure the guys, especially at Apple Insider, who are writing this, know better. But it's such clickbait. It just generates so much traffic. I think people would click anyway. Like, if you just write LG, LG says Apple announced, right. I think people yeah. would click on it the same. By the way, just so if you know, the de the name for this will be Quad Ultra High Definition. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, it's 16 <laughs> times bigger. I was at, see that this is this is why like there's subtle things you have to learn how to do when you're writing stories. I was introduced to somebody last night who uh, a woman who was introduced to me as a beetle a, a neurosurgeon who works on beetles b e e e t l e s an insect neurosurgeon and wow. you realize that that's and amazing yeah you, you you meet enough odd uh, you, you meet enough odd things in this world. That you don't understand, that you know that, gosh, I'm not gonna. I, I should go immediately right and say, "Wow, I met someone who who perform, performs micro neurosurgery on beetles," and I realize that no, this is the point at which I start asking very simple and straightforward questions to make sure <laughs> I understand exactly what is being said by beetle neurosurgeon, and it turned out to be something completely different from what those two words might actually mean. Do beetles uh, even have brains? Uh, they do. Uh, and according to this person, they do sometimes get tumors. Uh, and it turned out that it turned out uh, ten minutes into the conversation that uh, someone was having f played a practical joke on her by introducing her to me uh, with a fake job. Oh. <laughs> and she oh. and she 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 kept, she kept she kept up the improv for about ten minutes before with me again. Not my saying. Oh my God, that's so interesting. Saying oh, so my first question was, I, is this therapeutic or a research sort of <laughs> surgery? <laughs> Well, when you, for Beatles. So, so, like, if someone tells me that we're developing an 8K screen, my first, I will not say yours. I not say I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to say that's interesting. What, what purpose more. would an 8K see? <laughs> yes. what, what market exists for an 8K screen, right. and who is it being built for? And then eventually, they run out of ways to tell you that. Okay, I just made all that up. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Was she <laughs> at least an entomologist? Um, she was, uh, no, she, she, uh, she, uh, I'm trying to remember. She was she, a barista. She works, this, she works, no, she works in the sciences, oh, okay. uh, in, uh, in the social sciences. So she could uh, at least and, tell a good story. She could at least tell us she was a very good sport, and the, <laughs> the fact that, like, if I were introduced to somebody as, well, he, he, here's, he, he, is a, he is a mean ecotheologist, and for me to simply roll with that saying, yeah, well, the thing is, not many people build furniture for underwater installations, and this is going to be a, a more important thing as we try to populate uh, some of these places near the Marana's Trench. There's one th I How do you get a veneer this? to stick at 10,000 feet? These are the problems I'm trying to solve. I should just clarify because some people are asking the chat. The, the, if LG is a major supplier for Apple, so if they have an 8K panel, it is it, it is not beyond the realm of possibility. In fact, it's likely that Apple has those panels and is thinking, yeah. what can we do with these? Right. But that's not the same as Apple announcing it. And it reminds me of the Apple TV news this week where uh, it was said that the Apple TV, the new version, won't support 4K. <laughs> uh, and that's a yeah. tricky thing to report because as far as I know, and I might be wrong because this, this is not the most updated information, the hardware is perfectly capable of 4K. There's just very few 4K television sets and almost no 4K content on the market. So there's not going to be any 4K content for it at launch. But whether there's six months, a year, you know, two years, three years down the road, they can flip a switch on that. That's, a, that's sort of a, a nuanced difference, but I think it's an important one. Yeah. Can the hardware do it is the question, not, not what they're going to yeah. support out of the box. Right. Are you talking about... I, I, I've Seen two different. I've seen two different stories. One of which talking about the 4K Apple TV, and one person actually one that was talking about an actual 4K Apple television set. We talk, you're talking about the Apple TV, not the television. The Apple set. TV, yeah. 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 The Apple TV right. box. Yeah. Yeah. That that I mean that second one kind of leaped out at me because this is another case of so you're saying that you you have a disappointing news about a product that Apple has not even hinted at ever <laughs> releasing, and, and this is news how? Yeah. Uh. 
I guess it just points out the importance of listening to Mac Break Weekly each and every week. Well, it sets expectations. My only thing is that, like, it sets expectations, then it comes out, and they'll say, well, Apple promised us this, and, and you go back didn't. and say, Apple never right. said anything about right. that. Right. Like, didn't. where's my AKI where's Mac? The AKI? Apple announced the AKI Mac. Right, right. Our show today brought to you by the folks at IT Pro TV. Here's a place that uh, sets expectations they can keep, a great place to learn or polish your IT skills to keep up to date. IT Pro TV offers amazing courses in every field. Uh, you know, they originally started by Tim and Don, who uh, were IT trainers. They help people get their certs. They said there must be a better way. They saw the uh, Broadcast Minds panel I did a few years ago at uh, NAB, and they said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, what Leo does at Twit. We're going to do it for IT. And they have live streaming. They do about 30 hours, new hours every week. They have a chat room. They've got two, oh, I'm sorry, I have to update that. Uh-oh, now they're doing it better than Leo. Two studios, 50 hours a week. Oh, crap. Oh, well. Stream on demand to your Roku, to your Chromecast, your computer, your mobile device. They have certifications for Apple, Microsoft, Cisco, A+, CCNA, Security+, Plus, MCSA, CISSP, Network Security. They just released their Ethical Hacker courses. I hope you watch those with Sean Philip Oriano. Uh, he did it live, which was so cool over a two-week period. And now you can watch them on demand. He is the expert in security, consults with enterprise and military, wrote the book on CEH. I want my CEH, my Certified Ethical Hacker Cert. You get the Measure Up Practice exams with your subscription. That's worth $79. You also have this amazing virtual machine sandbox lab, which means you don't have to have a Windows machine to set up a Windows server to configure machines. You do it all with any HTML5 browser. This is so cool. And uh, since we talked with Mark Goodman on triangulation, IT Pro TV has just announced Sean's going to be back. Sean Phillips Oriano is going to come back for three weeks. Remember, Mark Goodman uh, wrote that incredible book on future crimes. He's going to teach a course on hacking. This, is, this would be such a great job. Hacking Forensics Investigator, and he's going to do crypto courses. i got to tell Steve Gibson about this. Let's fill the need for one, Mark Goodman said, we need one million cybersecurity professionals in the next uh, year or so. We Do it. IT, this is going to be a great career. IT Pro TVs, their live stream is available for free with a basic account. So you can watch the entire course. If you watch the CES, CEH, of course, you know how that worked. You could do the same thing. With the Hacking Forensics Investigator and Cryptography, live 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern, starting April 27th. Put that in your calendar. You do not have, That's free. However, I would love for you to subscribe to uh, IT Pro TV, and I think you would, too. Subscriptions normally $57 a month or $570 for a year. By the way, if you get the year, then you can download uh, all the stuff and watch offline. They also have client and group pricing available. And some of their clients, uh, I mean, corporate and group pricing, some of their clients include Harvard and MIT, Stanford, UCSD. This is good stuff. You'll get a free seven-day trial, and you can get 30% off for the lifetime of your account. That makes it less than $40 a month uh, if you use the offer code MACBREAK30. MACBREAK30 at itpro.tv slash macbreak. Oh, man. I'm thinking of a new career in forensics. <laughs> I really want to do that. Well, I'm going to take the course CSI, anyway. Petaluma. I know. It's so cool. And, you know, if you're in law enforcement, uh, this would be such a great skill. Mark Goodman himself, this is such a funny story. He told this story in, in, on Triangulation a couple of weeks ago. He was an LAPD, just a beat cop, and his sergeant said, Hey, Goodman. How do, you, how do you start spell check on uh, WordPerfect? He said, shift F2. He said, you're hired. And then all of a sudden, he's the forensics guy for the LAPD because he knew how to do spell check on WordPerfect. All the writers <laughs> on CSI Cyber need to take this program. I think so. Yeah, let's get some real good information in there. It's free if you watch it live, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time starting April 27th. Really cool. We, we love these guys. Tim and Dom are so great. Aren't they coming out? They're coming out, I think, soon. If if not, we'll get them out. ITPro.tv slash MacBreak. Angela Arendt, the new head of retail uh, at Apple, 
told employees, quote, a significant change in mindset is coming to the way Apple launches products. Now, remember that there was a big move to get people to come into the Apple store to buy their phones. According to this article, uh, and, and good, we're going to get you a chance to uh, vet this here, vet Business Insider, Jim Edwards writing, she wants to encourage customers to avoid their local Apple store when the watch goes on sale and order online. <laughs> Is that true? They've been doing that for a while. If you look at the most recent iPhone launches, they for a while it, it seemed prior to Angela Aaron's that they would try to encourage you to go to the store. They wanted Tim the Cook they wanted said the that. He yeah, said it now, in a quarterly analyst call. We want to get people in the store. They want to get the store to buy iPhones, but for the launch itself, it started to look more and more over the years that it was becoming, like Andy said earlier, problematic for them. Yeah. And if you more recently, they've been making pre-orders available and they've been guaranteeing shipment as best as they can day and date. And that's been taking a lot of pressure off of off of retail. And those those launches are hard for retail. Oh, I know. But it's also fun for retail. I mean, don't downplay the value of having a line outside the store. The employees get all excited. They count down when the door is opening. They clap when people buy the first one. I mean, there's there's for a retail employee, it probably has to be a highlight. But yeah, they'll I mean, still get to do it's, that. It's, it's a it's probably it's a, a highlight for the first few times that they do it, yeah. but by year five, it's probably getting <laughs> to be tiresome. And then people are really aggressive. When I, I remember once Renee and I lined up for the entire night and we got there, we are racing down to try to get to be first in line. There was three fights that broke out on who was the first person to get the iPhone. <laughs> and so I think that they can also get a lot of negative press and I'm, they're hoping to make this as smooth as possible. Point. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, a, a that's exactly right. We, you 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 hear about the quotes about the disaster of New Coke when the per, when the team that led up that project later on was saying was was this just like a brilliant scheme to get people to buy more of the regular classic Coke? And he said, "I'm not that, that dumb and I'm not that stupid. I'm not that smart. I'm not that dumb." And the more that you see, look at the arguments that oh, I, I bet that they're sort of constraining uh, supply to make sure there's high demand for this. Uh, I, I might have. I might have had more belief in that argument a few years ago, but now it's starting to make Apple look like they can't anticipate demand and they can't manufacture if they can't anticipate this sort of stuff. So the better the 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 better they can do at managing people's expectations of how likely is it going to be that I'm going to be able to walk away with a new phone, a new laptop, a new watch in the first few weeks, the better they're going to look as a company. It's it's something that doesn't make them look good because if, if they're telling people, if they're encouraging people to show up at the store and not have have any assurance there's going to be any stock of what they want uh, i'm sorry enjoy your 16 gigabyte you know ipad air 2 i know you didn't want that one but that's all we have for the next two months the better they can do it managing it the more professional they look and the better the experience is going to be for for uh, for every consumer that's actually a really good point there's also the issue of scalping as you mentioned yeah. um and when, people getting paid to wait in lines and it's it's not the spirit that it always wants to be yeah. yeah, I went. I waited in line for the iPhone 6. We got there. What time did we get there, John? Midnight to it? You got there at 10 p.m. I think I arrived at 2 or 3 a.m. And it wasn't the f experience I'd had waiting for the first iPhone, which was really a joyous right. experience. There were too many people there who were there just, you know, to get it for somebody else. Or, or I hate to say it, but like bums who had been hired by somebody to wait in line for them. So maybe that's it. Apparently, there's not going to be any in-store pickup at all in the U.K. for the Apple Watch. I don't know what's yeah. happening in Canada. Do you know? I don't know for sure in Canada. In the U.S., I believe there is. Yeah. Uh, customers will be able in the U.S., according to this article, to pick up their watch in store. But they aren't. you are encouraged to order online. I'm going to order online. I thought, see, I'm, I misunderstood. I got the impression that Apple really wanted people to make these 15-minute appointments and have the experience of trying it on if you're unsure so there's there's going to be a there's going to yeah. be people like us who just are happy to order we know exactly what we want or close enough and there's right. going to be people who are unconvinced they really want to see the bands they're not sure about you know the and they're going to want to come in so the apple needs to cater to both those sort of ends of the spectrum yeah also real, realize the kind of if anybody has had any exposure to a smartwatch which is not likely pretty much they've seen things like the huge android wear watches that the, that have been on the market to this point they've seen things like the pebble watches that are cute and they're very wearable but they're not terribly ambitious uh, I, I can't I can't say this enough Apple really has a big job ahead of them just to teach people that we are building something brand new please come in unafraid and with no expectations and we will fill you in on something that we're terribly excited about 
When, when you think, though, that they have like a 300 million user base of people that have like fives and sixes and then can use the watch, like even if they only capture 2% of their base core audience, and they're definitely going to get over that, they're already hitting over 5 million people that are going to be buying the watch. So I think that it's gonna, not going to be as hard of a sell because people that love Apple products really love Apple products. Yeah. And I think that the watch is going to be easier to sell than they would expect. Well, the uh, Business I'll, Insider I'll, got I'll a leak. Like Go ahead. Uh, just, I, I would like to think it's going to be at least a little bit of a hard sell because, again, it is so new. I, I would be very suspicious of somebody who said, I know that the new iPad costs $500, but I don't care. I'm going to spend it anyway. I have no idea how it works. I've seen a couple of videos. I've seen everybody cheering during the rollout. But that's the fact that it has an Apple logo on it is good enough for me. I don't think any company can live up to that kind of expectations. I'm not even talking about, I'm not even complaining about hype. I'm not complaining about uh, hero worship. I'm saying that this is a bad, this would be a bad position for Apple to be in to simply say that just the fact that we put a logo on something is all the reason you need to buy this. I really like the fact that they keep saying, look, we're going to, we're making this case point by point by point. We're releasing videos. We're doing multiple events. We are restructuring our stores so that people can come in without any, we're not going to do a credit check. We're not going to have any sort of idea of whether or not you're capable of buying you know, the, the steel or the sport band. We really understand that we need to explain to you and convince you that we've done something great here. The thing that was interesting to me is that my mother and my sister, they never wanted first generation iPhones. They didn't get iPhones until much later. They didn't get first generation iPads. They had no interest in it. And they thought I was nuts when I drive to Albany to get them. And they both want uh, first generation Apple watches. They oh, want to get them immediately. I have some friends too. And the reason is because they have specific problems with their iPhones. Like my mom keeps her phone in her purse and she misses messages and calls. My sister's paging system at the hospital works off iPhones. It doesn't want to have to carry her phone. So they all have these, these problems that they face day in and day out. And they've seen enough in the Apple Watch to know or at least to suspect that it'll solve that problem for them. And that's made being an early adopter or getting the first generation or just knowing that they, <coughs> they want to order it a very easy choice for them. This is the, I guess I didn't realize this, but Business Insider actually got a picture of the memo, <laughs> not yeah. the actual memo. Uh, I, so there's some credibility here because there's the, the Apple Watch table. And I have been told by, some, by a person I know who has actually seen the table. Uh, that it is a very high-tech uh, table with lots of electronics inside. We got to try them. Shonardi and I lingered so long at the event that one of the tables cleared out. And oh, neat. Us, yeah, you get, to, you, you get a badge, and you get to press the badge on the side, and the secret door drawer opens up, yeah. and all the watches are in little containers see, there. There it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in, the, really in, cool. in the text of the memo uh, from Angela Arendt, get in line online. The days of waiting... In line and crossing fingers for a product are over for our customers, she writes. The Apple Store app and our online store make it much easier to purchase Apple Watch and the new MacBook. Note that, the new MacBook, too. Um, customers will know exactly when and where their product arrives. This is a significant change in mindset, and we need your help to make it happen. Tell your customers we have more availability online and show them how easy it is to order. You'll make their day. So that is a very clear, I mean, I think this is a genuine memo, and that's a very clear shift. And I think Mark Gurman also reported that even in stores where they, they won't necessarily have a lot of stock and you'll be you'll be taken with them very kindly over to Kiosk, which is their version of the Apple store. And you'll you'll <laughs> order, order it that way and it'll wow. yeah, and it'll be delivered to you. Should I should get the Apple app on my iPad or iPhone, right? Because yes. uh, I remember last year uh, when the iPhone 6 uh, the Apple Store online was all broken, but you could get through barely. You could get through on the app. So do it through the app, it sounds like. Try both, yeah. Try both. Have both going. Yeah. <laughs> there'll probably be a limit. I think the iPhones are usually two units per person or per account. So right. Don't think you can buy an army full of them immediately. Well, I, you know, uh, I do feel like these watches will often be sold in pairs uh, because, I, like, Lisa and I are going to buy both buy them so we can do the heart you can thing. send your heart right <laughs> you can send the cute little pictures too to yeah. each other i think i'm going to drain my watch in the first hour <laughs> yeah i'm going to be sending them to everyone don't don't send me your message your so do you have a special someone and are you, that you're going to get a have to get a watch so you can do this i am my yeah. husband and i are both going to be getting watches uh it's going to be for his birthday he's very excited yeah and now would yeah. he normally is he a, is he a mac geek Apple he is geek. he is quiet and he's been using he has a pebble and ah. um so he he he's not a watch person per se but he loved the pebble because he could get any notification without having to worry yeah 
And that'll be the same reason why I'm going to be getting the watch is I have the iPhone 6 Plus. It's huge. Trying to get out of my purse is a mess. Yeah. And so it's going to make it easy. And then we can, if I'm in session and someone has an emergency, I can Isn't that get cool? the, the message yeah. right away. Uh, you're a psychotherapist. A lot of therapists don't wear watches because they don't want to be looking at the watch during the session. It always annoys me. They put the clock behind my head. Right. So it looks like they're looking at me. Meanwhile, they're thinking, they're almost done, almost done. Right. Keep talking. Keep talking. I have, I have, two, talking. I have two clocks in the room, actually. One that's behind the person uh, and one that's in front of them Good. so that they can also monitor their yeah. own time. That drives me crazy because I can't tell what time it is because they put the clock behind me. I right, need to know if I've got enough time to tell this. And it's long going story. faster than a normal, than a normal clock. <laughs> right. It is because a whole because an hour is fifty minutes. It's I don't understand it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, my ex-wife is a psychotherapist, and uh, when I told her that my therapist had his clock behind me and I couldn't see it, she said that's not good. She, he should have two, just like you do, Georgia. Ex exactly, so that everyone feels comfortable and no one feels stressed. But would you? you but how would you do the watch? I mean, that's. That's going to send well, a I'm message. Not gonna have any, I'm not going to have any notifications. Only uh, I'll have everything off. I, I will okay. I will just have to. Yeah. But if I have a client that is on, um, you know, that is in dire straits and I need to get a message from them from the hospital immediately, then instead of having them buzz my phone in the room, which is very distracting in session, exactly. but only in cases of emergency, they can do that. Instead, they can send me a message of, you know, emergency call right now, and then I will have to relieve myself from session or... Right. You know, call back in between and sessions just so that I get the message. You'll have to teach that's your husband some secret actually, taps. Because the taps, right. the clients don't know about the tapping. I know. I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to do that, though, because it'll be so distracting to me. That, <laughs> You'll you know, giggle I, in the middle yeah. of the session. <laughs> Inappropriate I'm giggling. giggling too, so, so I'll I, be I tapping out, where's my sandwich? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll have, to, I'll have to have everything off while I'm in session unless it's an emergency. It does strike me that that's sort of an interesting modification to like the way that we we, we socialize with each other because right. th you could make you could make the argument that if you've got you if you've got your phone let's say on the uh, on a, a table that's near near one of the chairs near the desk and it buzzes quietly and there seems to be part of the okay there is something that is apparently important enough that someone is calling my doctor during this session you excuse yourself and then for five seconds either dismiss the call or say oh actually this is a medical emergency i'm afraid i have to excuse myself would that be better than simply i've something has been communicated to you in this room without my knowledge now you're just saying oh gee i'm sorry i forgot my pen i'll be right back <laughs> you know, it's, it's I mean, you're, you're, every, everybody it everybody's funny. entitled to the form of communication that works best for them but it's going to be interesting that now every time someone says oops i'm sorry look at this i've just spilled this water all over my shirt let me go for, out oh, for a second dear. and change that <laughs> yeah what's no. funny for me is i had lunch with someone who had an apple watch for a long time and I had my phone in my pocket and my notifications are almost always off. There's only one thing that can buzz it and only certain people that come through for that. And it's people who usually have critical information for me. So when it, when it does buzz, I, I almost always have to check it. So there are a couple of times when having lunch where I had to excuse myself and, you know, sit up a little bit so I could pull my monstrous iPhone six plus out of my pocket and then look at the notification. And I have previews off because you never know, you, you don't want to have any sensitive information display. So I have to swipe through it to get them. And it's, it's this, it didn't seem like it was an arduous ordeal, but a couple of times I just saw him twist his wrist slightly, glance at his watch, and then go back to talking to me. And suddenly I felt like a, like an animal, like a caveman, like someone from a different time. And I just, it was such yeah. a much more elegant experience for him to do what I was trying so poorly to do that I was sold on the whole notification triage system immediately. Incidentally, yeah. Yeah, uh, look at this table. You, you uh, if you walk into the store, that you will not be able to touch the watch. They are under glass yep. in this table. Uh, you can only touch the watch if you have a 15-minute appointment slot. So uh, can we schedule those now? No, uh, Friday morning. They should allow us to do it sooner. They'd be gone instantaneously. They'd be I know. Until <laughs> yeah. I just, hey, they I do just it had this a way brilliant... so you still have hope that you'll be able to get an appointment on the first day. <laughs> and I, then I, they're going to snatch I, I that gotta... hope away from you <laughs> right when it opens. Oh, man. There the, the products will not be on little stands or attached to security changes, the iPhones are, uh, because, in part, the back of this watch has sensors. And uh, they, so they can't sit on a display, so they have to have some sort of plastic thing holding them. And they can't be locked down and blah, blah, blah. Wow. So you, when you tap the card, does the glass slide back? We don't know. No. <laughs> no? 
It no, doesn't no, emerge like Goldfinger the uh, from no. the. Floor. The watches are in the drawer underneath. Oh. Although it is a it is a it is a concealed drawer, so it is still hella cool. That's cool. Wow, I can't wait. I want to go in. Tim Cook has wanted one since he's five years old, Leo, and unlike us, he has the resources to make it happen. <laughs> Anything <laughs> Tim Cook wants, he gets, including if he wanted yeah, an AK Mac, I guess he could do that. Yeah, I don't know. See, Jeff Bezos had the same thing, but when he decided, if he became a billionaire, he said, you know what? I'm going to build spaceships. <laughs> if, if, if Tim Cook just wanted a wristwatch, I don't know <laughs> if this is the most ambitious guy in the world. Uh, let's see. Um, HBO Now shipped today. I don't know if that's, maybe that's one of your picks. I won't. Uh, nope, nobody has that. So uh, something to that's, be aware of. This is the one that's 15, what is it, $15 a month for non-cable company subscribers. U.S. only, and, the, only. And, and last last week was also Sling dot Sling TV also announced that it is also offering that same service for fifteen dollars a month uh -huh. if you already subscribe to their twenty dollars a month package. So it looks like the and, and they also said it's it's also going to be available in time for the premiere of, of Game of Thrones. Yeah, uh, somebody was saying that the Sling TV had all sorts of issues during March Madness, especially the finals. Yeah, there was a lot of buffering. Streaming is stuff. hard. Yeah. Uh, HBO, as we, as we mentioned before, is uh, using uh, MLB's uh, very robust network. Major League Baseball's very robust network, which is probably why it's, it's not amazing. available in Canada. Because you guys don't it's have amazing. baseball, do you? We you just yeah. play hockey, we have, right? We have the Toronto right. uh, Blue Jays. <laughs> no, I'm teasing you. Uh, no, but it's, it's it's amazing how companies that figure... It is so hard. The companies that figure it out can become infrastructure companies. Right. Almost like how Amazon became an infrastructure company. Right, right. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the last few. HBO's CEO reached out to Jimmy Iovine. That's how, apparently, uh, the uh, deal between Apple and HBO Now happened. But I didn't mention HBO Now for the first three months is only Apple TV, iOS, uh, and, you know, iPad and uh, iPhone. But uh, apparently HBO approached Apple about doing this. Jimmy's response was, that's the expletive. I think that's the... You know, if when we say it that way, I don't think people are going to think of what the expletive it is. I think that's the S word. Yeah. God, I feel like a four-year-old when I say that. <laughs> um, okay. What else? Uh, Samsung is going has got the contract for the uh, A9, the next Apple uh, microprocessor, at least according to Bloomberg, and Bloomberg ought to know. Um, that's been yeah, they've been reporting that every two. Two or three months for the last year or two years. Oh, you really are bitter, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not. I just I want them to work a little bit. Yeah, I agree. But I'm not it's working, so I can't really complain. I'm just reading their article. Um, okay. So, you know, I think the only reason that's interesting is people thought maybe Samsung and Apple had had a rift because of the lawsuits and no... Samsung still provides most of the... They're a major panel manufacturer, a major yeah. NAND flash manufacturer. Yeah. You can't Samsung avoid them. Samsung is a them. conglomerate. It's not like... It's, it's, it's basically Korea in many ways. It's like... It's Adachi Korea. In the 80s. You can't yeah. avoid Korea. Yeah. And apparently this S6 is bendable, but I'm not going to bend it. Can we just stop yeah. the insanity? It's physics. <laughs> I just that's I, I was just I was just so, t so some things some things in the tech news cycle just get me so exhausted. I know. And one of them, it it exhausted me when people were saying, "Oh my God, look what happens if you put if you put the iPhone six under an anvil and you press down on with both sides." <laughs> and now I'm I'm equally tired with, "Hey look, hey look, now the Samsung six has this problem. Oh look, Samsung." It's like, okay, fine. Take care of your toys. This don't have. This won't happen. <laughs> it's it's funny only in that it should be a lesson to Samsung executives not to not to say their stuff is unbendable or to make fun of Apple. Just like make good phones. It's all we consumers want. Make good phones. They did say Andy, that, right? It's a, it's well, Apple, Apple, Apple's done the yeah, same. Apple thing does it too. I don't think anybody should do it. Yeah, you're right. Andy, it's a serious issue issue for blacksmiths. <laughs> if you have an anvil, well, that's, and <laughs> well, see, look, it, it, it should be the least. It should be the least issue possible for blacksmiths because if it happens to your phone, you simply drop it in the forge, get it white hot again, <laughs> put it back on the on the forge, hammer it flat, you're done. Those are the and then people. You have who, the iPhone yeah. sword. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. When we come back, your picks. Georgia, you've not been here before. We called you like minutes before the show began. So I'm not going to make you do a pick unless you have something you like and you want to talk about. And it does not sure. have to be uh, a you know, program. It could be anything, as you'll see, because Andy always picks crazy things. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm going to pick Groot. <laughs> uh, yeah, Groot. Groot's always safe. Now, is that a dancing Groot? 
It is. It's the Bobblehead Group. Oh, okay. That is a very nice group. Excellent group. Can you just quit your job on Tuesdays? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I want to get you back here. We'll figure it out. Awesome. Maybe we'll just move Mac Break Weekly. Do you get a day off? Mondays and Fridays. <laughs> Mondays and Fridays. We'll figure it out. You work Saturday and Sunday. No, I, I, I'm off also on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, all right. Mondays and Fridays. Our show today brought to you by Gazelle. If it is time for you to buy something new, like maybe a watch or a book, maybe you have some old stuff lying around, like maybe a Note 4, just <laughs> sitting in a drawer gathering dust. You know, if you've got an old phone or an old pad or a uh, tablet or a... You, it's silly to leave it in the drawer or put it, you know, as a doorstop because it's like you wouldn't use a $100 bill as a doorstop. You can get cash for this sucker. So go to gazelle.com and get the, a great price on your old stuff. You get paid in cash, a check, PayPal, or an Amazon gift card. They bump the, the, the offer up by 5% if you take the Amazon gift card. So that's a good deal. Um, now, here's the nice thing. The quote that you're going to get from a Gazelle is good for 30 days. So you can shop around and check it out and, you know, and maybe even not decide. Maybe you're not sure what you're going to get the watch or which watch you're going to get. What did that? What? What? This thing's worth 275 bucks? What? That would, I'm going to sell this. Bookmark that. Halfway to an Apple Watch. Halfway to an Apple Watch. With one, with one swell foop. They pay for the shipping too. So once you're ready to sell, you click the button. They send you a box. They pay for anything worth more than a buck. If you forget to wipe the data, or you can't because it's broken, because, yeah, they buy broken iPhones and iPads, they'll wipe the data for you. Don't worry about that. Now, you may ask, Leo, what do they do with all those devices? Well, the very best, the creme de la creme, they offer for sale. See, Gazelle, this is a new thing from Gazelle, is now offering uh, certified pre-owned gadgets, devices from Apple and Samsung. So there are two conditions. They're certified like new and certified good. Certified good devices so show some gentle signs of wear, but uh, are going to get you a big savings. You know, this this Note 4 is a perfect example because uh, it's in great shape. There's just, but there's a little, like the bezel's not, is a little nicked at certain spots. That's all. What they do with everything, of course, is run it through a rigorous 30-port inspection, make sure everything's working fine. And, of course, there's no risk because certified pre-owned devices from Gazelle are backed by a 30-day risk-free return policy. Gazelle, to buy and to sell, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, gazelle.com. We thank them for their support. Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie, why don't you kick things off? So it is a National Autism Awareness Month. Uh, some people call it National Autism Acceptance Month. Uh, both are I like really that. good things. I like that, uh, yeah. And Apple is doing a promotion in the App Store for a bunch of apps that are really helpful in, in many different ways, uh, especially for children who are on the autistic spectrum. Uh, there's a whole category in iTunes for this month where you can go and get things that help them with communications, that help them with learning, that help them with all sorts of, of uh, skills that are really important. One of the apps that I got a chance to see at UL, uh, because it's made by people in Ireland, is called Grace. And what Grace does is it lets, it's a visual, um, sometimes people with on the autistic spectrum, they just can't communicate what they want to communicate. So this lets you take a picture of something with your iPhone, it loads it in, it makes it into a card, and then the child can assemble the cards in order to make visual sentences. Oh, so they can just assemble them and then show them to their parent or their guardian or their caretaker, whoever whoever they want to communicate with. And if something is missing, traditionally you couldn't do anything about it. You just couldn't add that card. But they can, you know, they or their parent again can just take the device, take another picture, add a new card to it. So their vocabulary can grow almost instantly and it can adapt to almost any situation. And and once they have this, it just empowers them with a level of communication, uh, empowers both them and the people around them with a level of communication that they've never been able to enjoy before. Uh, and if you look, the iPad especially is uh, five years old as of last Friday. And uh, there's been people blogging about using it with people in the autistic spectrum for the last five years. Apple added the guiding, the guided um, access mode a couple of years ago to help people focus more on those apps. And it's just when you start looking at how it, it makes a real difference in people's lives, uh, you know, it goes back to that commercial where Apple said, you know, technology is nice, lighter, thinner, faster. These are all good things. But it's, it's the experience, it's what you can do with it that really matters. And it's apps like these, to me at least, that show, you know, when you make this technology 
not just available, but you make it accessible, you make it, you know, almost anybody can buy it and use it, then you really get the benefit of, of apps like these. Um, and I think so it's cool. terrific that they're highlighting them. Yeah, that is so great. Uh, I guess, how do you do this? You search for Autism Awareness Month or... Yeah, and we have we put up a, a, a big post on it in Lime War too with a bunch of okay. extra apps and accessories and okay. things. And there's some bundles as well. Some of the apps are half off. Some of them are bundled together so that you can get them at a discount. And it's 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 really cool. Autism Awareness Week and Grace. Yes. See by Stephen Trotton Smith, who you might know from all his awesome hackery on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the guy who gets, you know, iOS apps running on Nintendos and things like that. <laughs> Andy Anaka, what do you got for us? Uh, mine is a web browser, let's say, time observer app uh, called Waste No Time. It's a plugin that works with Safari and with Chrome. And you see, you've heard about these uh, these uh, plugins you can put in that say, "Look, I don't want to be distracted by the internet. Please, just uh, whatever I do, don't let me access the internet for the next 30 minutes because I just need to get uh, through this to do list. I just need to write this sort of thing." Um, the problem with a lot of them is that they are really all or nothing at all. Um, they don't really help you figure out where are you wasting time on the internet, how bad is this problem, and what are the sources of your problems. Because I myself, you know, if I'm stuck for more than like 15 seconds on the next sentence, I might like tab over and just see, okay, has, has my favorite web comic been updated today? Uh, and so this will give you like bar charts to simply say, here is all the time you spent on the internet today and here are all the sites that you visited. And then you can simply say, look, give me just 30 minutes a day on Facebook. Let me only have one hour on Tumblr. Uh, let, don't let me access Reddit at all. Uh, and when you enable it, you'll basically be able to create an environment where... For, like in my case, for instance, I would be able to write my columns, still access uh, uh, websites that I need to access to like look up product specs on apple.com and stuff like that. Um, the weaknesses of it are that it is easy to get around if you know how your web browser works. But I think that's that's okay because really the purpose of this sort of a blocker is to remind you that, look, you told yourself you did not want to be distracted for the next half hour. I'm here to remind you that you really wanted to focus. And if you really do want to, like with with some of these other uh, plugins, if you really do want to quit your browser and restart it or shut down your Mac and restart it, you're free to do so. But now you're sort of like that person who is now, you know, going going into the recycling in your garage to find that one cigarette butt that you know still has about a good 20 seconds worth of smoke left onto it. That's the sort of behavior that reminds you that, oh, I guess I really do have a problem a with problem. dependency and obsessive behavior here. Here's the challenge uh, so section, which you have to enable. When you are blocked by the time quota you set, you will likely be tempted to add more time or <laughs> remove a blocked site. This option helps you fight the urge. So you can say, Type, make me type a randomly generated string. And, and I guess that's kind of like, you know, counting to 10, only it's harder. Yeah, it's your safe word, and <laughs> it's different every time. And then if you type it, okay, you can go back to Reddit, but uh, mm -hmm. don't say we didn't warn you. Now, Andy, will this lock me out of, of playing Candy Crush? Uh huh. You can have that on your uh, block list. Oh, that's a, only on the web, though, a, right? On That's the, a good that idea. would be good it, enough for me because I will play Candy Crush on the web and surf Reddit instead of doing any of my paperwork. So <laughs> I might need you know, this. You know, what, you know what it should do? Like, uh, if you want to block like phones, uh, apps like that on the phone, there should be an app that says, "Okay, well, because j just like Expetra Cluzo hired Cato, just look, I don't care wherever I am, try to attack me anytime <laughs> I'm inside the house." So you could tell me, look, anytime I try to launch Candy Crush, you are to take one photo from my private photo roll at random, <laughs> upload it to a URL, and give me like a math problem I have to solve to figure out what that URL is in order to take it down. <laughs> and so instead of playing Candy Crush, you have to do 30 minutes worth of math to prevent like your embarrassing like drunk birthday photos from being like on, on Reddit. Love it. Actually, you, you teach uh, uh, CBT, don't you? This would be a yes. good tool... For clients, uh, if you had any clients that just couldn't manage I, to avoid their compulsive playing of, I don't know, Candy Crush Saga. Yeah, or World of Warcraft. World of or, Warcraft. You know, Duty, whatever Same it might sense. be that they're playing now that they shouldn't. I think that it's a really useful tool because a lot of people want to do their work. But it's just, you know, that delay of, like, you want to avoid something that's a negative experience. Yeah. So you're going to do something else to avoid it. Yeah. It's like this. They're telling me it's like the scene in Young Frankenstein where... He goes in there and says, no matter what I do, do not let me out. What's the matter with you people? I was joking! <laughs>
Don't you know I'm joke when you hear one? <laughs> Jesus Christ, get me out of here! <laughs> Frau Blucher won't let him out. <laughs> Listens properly. <laughs> oh, I'm, I just installed this and now I'm uninstalling it right now. <laughs> right now. All right, Georgia, we gave you a few minutes to think. You got anything for us? Sure. I have a puzzle game that I'm playing on my iPhone, and it's called The Room 2. Love and it. the wonderful thing about this puzzle, it's an amazing puzzle game. Yeah. It's a 3D experience where you interact tactily with the world. And what I love about it is that if you get really frustrated, there's an area that you cannot pass, you can get a hint. And it's not, it's not going to give you the answer. It's just going to give you a tiny hint to lead you into the right direction. And then you go through it. And it's it's just beautifully rendered. It's a lot of fun. The auditory experience is also really interesting. And it's also a mystery game at the same time. So you're also trying to uncover what the mystery is as you play along. Yeah, highly recommended. The room and then the room two. Should You should start with the room, I guess, and then... You probably should yeah, start with the room yeah. before you go to the room two. It's, it, if you liked mist, yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, it's like a better mist. It's that kind of puzzle. It's beautiful 3D. Unlike mist, it's not a slideshow. It's... It's beautifully rendered. Uh, excellent choice. The room and the and now the room two. Gorgeous. Uh, have you solved? Did you solve it? Yes, I finished it. It was a lot of fun. It's hard. I, I, it's one of the games I can be fully immersed in, and in it's enjoyable over just being stressful. Stress. So you can choose your level of stress while you play the game. You're overstressed. <laughs> get a hint, and you can buy your way out. Georgia Dow, I want you to come back. You're so fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. I really uh, thank you for showing up at last minute. We weren't sure if Andy would be able to make it through the whole show. He did, which is great. <laughs> but uh, thank you for being here. You'll find more of her work at imore.com and also uh, her podcast. What's the name of it again? Yeah, there's, there's Vector, and I also do a gaming podcast called Isometric. Ooh. Is it like casual gaming? It's for casual gaming, and it's a podcast that breaks all the podcast rules, so we're usually joking around and doing silliness. Uh, what? So of the listeners. That is not yeah, allowed. Listen. Right. They don't actually play games. They just watch the podcast, <laughs> and it's funny to see us interact. Awesome. So look at look for Vector, and, uh, and uh, what is the name of the gaming show? Isometric. Isometric. I love it. Thank you, Georgia. We appreciate it. <laughs> Renee Ritchie is also at imore.com. He hosts uh, the debug show there and writes a lot. Uh, lately, writes a lot of stuff about how bad the mainstream media is, but uh, there's other things too. We just did, actually, we just did a five year retrospective on the iPad and we Ooh. managed to get comments from Caroline Milanese, Lauren Brichter, Alan Pike, Mark <gasps> Coano, Nitin Ganatra, Ben Baharin, Janie Yang, just a whole slew of people who were there either building the iPad or building apps for it the first year. Ken Case. Uh, James Kuda, just a, a litany of really cool developers gave us their thoughts on the iPad now, five years later. I'll yeah. stick it in the chat. Yeah, we didn't mention that. April 5th was the fifth anniversary of the, of the release of the very first iPad, April 5th, 2010. It does, you know, it exactly. both, it seems, it seems longer and not as long. It, it's funny. It's an odd thing. It doesn't seem like it's that been around that long and yet. Uh, it's, it's, it is because it's, it's ubiquitous. It, it, it is a bigger iPhone, but it's like an iPhone on iMac. So it, like people were used to the experience already. So it was additive, and then they just had to pick the sort of screen size they wanted. And then we got the you know the Retina version and the Mini. So it's 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 been part of a larger story, I think. Yeah, yeah, it has, and it, it has changed the world in a very significant way. All right, we'll look for that. Andy Anako, he is in Colorado now at the uh, Council on World Affairs. Go there if you can, if you're in the area and near Boulder. Yep, everything's open to the public, and we got sessions all the way until the end of the week. You're going to stay all week? I'm here all the way through Friday. Nice. So it's kind of like a working vacation, I, guess, I would guess, for you. It really is. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for about three hours a day, but in the rest of the time, I get to attend other people's talks. Uh, also, there are friends of mine that I met originally here at the conference that I get to see like uh, for the entire week. Boulder, Colorado is a beautiful city. I had a, I came here to the Colorado Rockies to finally have nice 60 to 70 degree spring weather because it's still in the low 40s back in Boston. Wow. Uh, so it's it's really great time. You meet people you never get to meet. You talk about things you rarely get to talk about. And 
I spend as much time on that panel talking as I do scribbling notes about these really interesting things that other people on the panel are saying on the same subject. Is there a website? I guess if I just Google it, I could probably find it. If you go colorado.edu backslash CWA, uh, that, that's the main site. It has the, the schedule. It has all the – just, just take, a, take a moment to just look through, like, all the people who are speaking here. One of the people uh, who's just a panelist here was one of the lawyers who argued Roe v. Wade. Wow. Um, we have wow. G. Willow Wilson, who was the writer of the, that incredibly cool uh, Ms. Marvel comic and has been doing a lot more stuff for Marvel, uh, and also uh, a really, really talented novelist, one of my favorite writers. Uh, just so many people that you're like, I would enjoy being here just to listen to these people talk, and I get to like hang out with them. So those are, it's really pretty cool. It's funny. As soon as I start typing colorado.edu, it takes me right to the bursars and asks me <laughs> for money. I don't understand that. There, there's the council on... Conference. I've been calling it Council Conference on World Affairs, 67th annual. Yep. Eleanor Roosevelt was the first keynote speaker for the oh, first wow. one. That's so neat. It's one of the reasons I was really happy when Henry said, I want to go to CU Boulder. I said, yeah. Yeah, it's really good, good you school. Should, you should come over. You should, you'd, you'd have some interesting go. things to say. I will go next year. I Lunch, lunches saying. and dinners are complimentary, also, oh, by the way. Mm. Wow. Free candy bars. Exactly. Thank you, Andy, Georgia, Renee. Thank you all for being here, too. Nice studio audience today. We appreciate that. If you want to be in the studio audience, we do ask that you would, uh, email tickets at twit.tv. And a little note, you know, we are doing our 10th anniversary of the network on April 19th, the big show, but we are sold out. Uh, however, if you got tickets already and you aren't going to be able to make it, we'd love it if you just email us and say, I can't go because there's a waiting list. And we'd love to get some other people uh, in. We'll make sure everybody who wants to come. On April 19th, can. Just tickets at twit.tv. Real people will actually get your email and respond to you. It's a miracle. <laughs> you, can, you can also... Shocking. Uh, it's shocking. Care plus. It's not, a, it's not plus. a robot. It's, it's <laughs> like Glenn. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can also, by the way, watch live. Uh, we are here every uh, uh, Tuesday at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC at live.twit.tv. On demand audio and video available at twit.tv slash mbw, youtube.com slash macbreakweekly, and wherever podcasts are distributed, iTunes, of course, but uh, the podcast app on your device, and even our own Twit apps, nicely designed by our community. We thank you for that. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Now back to work, because break time is over.